Welcome race fans to NASCAR Cup Series action coming to you from the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. I'm Jesse Punch. I'll be bringing you updates all evening long from down here on the grid and on pit road. Tonight's competition is the first elimination race of the NASCAR playoffs. So which drivers will advance to the next round? Well, Christopher Bell is the only driver who was officially locked in on a win, I should say. A few other drivers are looking safe on points, but there are definitely some guys that are needing to find victory lane tonight if they want to advance. Like I said, I'll keep you updated with storylines, updates all evening long from down here at Bristol. Have some fun tonight, race fans. Until the work was done. It just blood pull me under to the bottom of the well. You keep your motor running till that victory bell. One for the money to another show. Three, start your engines now and rock and roll. It's NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Bristol, the Bass Pro Shops night race. And it is Elimination Saturday, and what better track than the world's fastest half mile Bristol Motor Speedway. Alongside our crew chief, Steve Letart, Rick Allen with you. And Steve, this has become such a huge event, the night race here, but now it's an elimination race. Yeah, well, it's electric. It's the idea. NASCAR runs all over the country, but these big spread out racetracks, but not here at Bristol. It's the Coliseum. It is jammed in. As a competitor, it's the one racetrack you can feel the fans. They are right on top of you. That energy, that excitement, it's always existed at the night race. Now a playoff cut race. I didn't think it'd get more intense, but tonight has that feeling. And now what's on the line? Let's take a look at the Cup playoff standings presented by Xfinity. Only one driver coming in before this race starts is comfortable, and he will head on to round two. That's Christopher Bell based on points. There are two champions in Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick below the cut line right now. And again, after this race, the bottom four in points are eliminated. Let's bring in our drivers, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton. All right, guys, are these guys nervous as a cut race here at Bristol? Yeah, I think they're a little bit nervous. I mean, you can't help but get nervous when you come to Bristol. This place is menacing. It's intimidating. And a lot of bad things can happen to you here. I mean, there's something happening around the racetrack. You can't escape from the race car drivers on the track. There's nowhere to go. 
If you're in great shape and points, you hate this place track, this racetrack. If you're in trouble like Kevin Harvick, you'd love it because opportunity is created. A guy like Harvick, he's going to embrace this. Chaos is an advantage to him tonight. He wants to create it and then use it to his advantage. All right, a win and you advance. Junior, who's your guy? Who do you think is going to win tonight? Yeah, you're looking at him. Kevin Harvick, uh, I, I love this scenario for Kevin. I think he's built for this, just like you said, Jeff. And you know him really well, having worked with him in the past. I think the guy looks at this as like, this is how, this is how I make my name. This is how I become an icon. This is how I really you know, raise the level of who I am. I, I, I'm going to win this race in a in a moment where it looks like it's totally impossible. My back's against the wall. He said it earlier in the year. They don't know us. This is what we are about. He's going to prove it tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. I think Kyle Larson, what I saw yesterday in practice, he just looked like he had the best car. He's very good at moving around the racetrack. That's going to be important tonight. We're going to see cars running the bottom. We're going to see him against the wall. He loves all of that and any of it, so I think Kyle Larson's a guy tonight. I'm gonna take the guy Rick you said was comfortable because he was in. Christopher Bell, who drives that 20 car, he's the only playoff driver guaranteed to advance. He's already into the next round. He says he loves this racetrack. He loves this race, that energy, that excitement, and a little bit of that comfort. That'll be the driving factor for Christopher Bell. He's my pick. And again, 16 drivers, all with an opportunity for the championship. But after tonight, that will be whittled down to 12. Drivers are all strapped in. Let's fire the engines. That means we go trackside for the command. Here to give the command to start engines for tonight's Bass Pro Shops Night Race. Please welcome noted conservationist Johnny Morris, the founder of Bass Pro Shops, joined by some of his favorite fishing buddies and the next generation of conservationists. To start us off tonight, the voice of champions, Michael Buffer. Good evening once again, race fans. The, pardon me, the track is ready, the drivers are ready, the cars are ready. Bristol, are you ready? Racing fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, it's Bristol, baby. Let's get ready to rumble! What a beautiful Saturday night in America. And on behalf of all the outfitters that wake up every day excited to serve our customers with everything they need to do with the great outdoors, on our 50th anniversary of Bass Pro Shops, we are very proud to sponsor the Great American Night Race. We proudly dedicate this race to all the sportsmen and women in this country to our conservation partners. Most of all, we dedicate it to the next generation of anglers and hunters and conservationists. Jesse, get us started, Betty. That's a bugling elk that we just heard there. Before the command, the engines are fired. We're ready to go. We're racing at night of Bristol. Tonight's race is the first elimination race of the playoffs and Chase Briscoe is sitting in the 15th position, nine points below the cut line. If he's going to advance, he's going to have to make something happen here this evening. Now, we talked to Briscoe a few weeks ago about the unknowns of racing here at Bristol. This is what he had to say about tonight's competition. I think, you know, this Bristol is going to be obviously totally different than the first race, but I don't think the next gen car has, has seen anything like Bristol. And now with the playoff race, this will be, you know, we don't have the, the spring race to go back on and look at notes or even know what to expect. So 
Yeah, I think Bristol's a, a huge question mark for all the teams just because it's unlike any other racetrack we go to. So hopefully your setup stuff that maybe you learned at Dover can apply, but you know, Bristol's its own character. Despite the unknowns on the preparation side, strong qualifying effort for Briscoe. He rolls off tonight in the second position in that 14. It's a track that you have to think about breathing. I mean, you can't take a single second off. Your heart rate's just spiked all the time. Things happen so fast that you forget to breathe. Just gets you jacked up as a driver. Damn, I'm ready to rip somebody's freaking head off. So high paced and no time relaxed. Bristol's one of those tracks that definitely has you up on the wheel. You gotta have your elbows up the entire time. It's just a very intense place to race. It's an intense place to just make laps, honestly. It's an intense track. I mean, it, it is. It lives up to the hype. Saturday night under the lights. That's the coolest place to go race. And it's all about to happen right now. I want to take a look at tonight's starting grid brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. That will be on the left side of the screen up front. Eric Almirola and Chase Briscoe and all Ford front row. Alex Bowman, Denny Hamlin right behind them. Want to dial up Chase Elliott with the Xfinity on board and we chat with him, Junior. Hey, Chase Elliott, it's Junior in the booth. You got us? Yeah, man, go ahead. Man, it's the night race at Bristol, 500 laps. Tell us what this race means to you. Uh, it doesn't get any better than this. This is one of those events as a kid that made me want to be a race car driver. So this atmosphere is unmatched and um, just a, a real thrill to be a part of this, this event this year. Talked in the media a little bit about some of the challenges of this track, some of the bumps down in one and two. What are some things you're thinking about? Yeah, just thinking about uh, my poor qualifying effort now. I'm going <laughs> to how I'm going to figure our way forward. So got to work it out for us, but got the right team and group to, to fight through it tonight. Try to be around those last hundred, have a shot. So ready to go to work. All right, man, we know you got a long night ahead of you. We're going to be watching you put on a show for us. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Y'all enjoy this one. Judy, you've had quite an influence on a lot of these drivers. We're going to see their gloves that they're wearing. Looks like your gloves uh, that we have seen in the past with you wearing, but this is for your foundation, correct? Yeah, we're actually, uh, we've got about 50 drivers this weekend in a couple series at Bristol wearing these gloves. We're going to auction them off on the website foundation for the Dale Jr. Foundation, and all of this goes to Nationwide Children's Hospital, so we're excited for people to, to help us raise a lot of money to help those kids. And uh, thankful for the drivers to, uh, to, you know, drivers are particular about what they wear, their shoes, their suits, and all that stuff. And everybody's kind of, you know, wearing these gloves. And they got to break them in, get them comfortable. So we really appreciate them kind of going with the inconvenience there. I actually saw uh, Kurt Busch. You sent a, a pair to him as well. He said, I can't be there. I wish I could be there for the race at Bristol. But I've signed one. Dale Jr. is going to sign the other, and, and they'll be able to auction that off. So that was cool for Kurt Busch as well. We know he's watching. All right. Storylines of plenty here. The last race of the first round of the playoffs. Let's start it off with Dylan Welsh. Rick Daniel Suarez is six points to the good on the positive side of the playoff line. Not exactly comfortable, but there is only one thing that they're worried about tonight, and that's themselves, that 99 car. Daniel told me today that if they just control their own car, their own race, the points will be taken care of at the end of the night. And while he's struggled here lately, some overnight changes have him much happier for now than he was at the start of the weekend. Dave Burns. Dylan, the camera has to pan way to the back to find Austin Dillon at the start of this race. He qualified 28th in a very nervous looking Camaro. So he's got to go forward in stage one. The leaders will be coming. He's going to ruffle some feathers. He may have to take some risks, but he cannot ride. He's got to make up time because he starts below the cut line. Minus three points, Kim. Well, Dave, Chase Briscoe enters tonight's elimination rates 15th on the playoff board. Nine points below that bubble. And when I talked to the team this morning, 
They told me they're taking an optimistic approach to their situation. As you see, Chase, there with the Mahinder tractors on board camera. Crew Chief Johnny Klossmeyer told me it's simple. They're currently out. They need to be in, and that means Chase gets to play offense. They were extremely happy with where they unloaded yesterday and said they did what they needed to do, and that's get early track position with their P2 qualifying effort. And the next goal, Marty, take advantage of that starting spot and get stage points. Well, Kim, Kevin Harvick three times has been in a must-win situation in the playoffs, and he has delivered with a victory to either advance to the next round or win a championship. I would describe the mood in the four camp as we ride on board with the Hunt Brothers Pizza camera as quiet confidence. Rodney Childress said Kevin Harvick went out, made a 45-lap run in practice, didn't say a word on the radio, plugged in his digital radio and said, don't touch a thing. Rodney asked him again this morning, you want me to make any changes? He said, I said, don't touch a thing. Kevin Harvick knows how to get it done at Bristol. He's finished first and second in the last two races. A win tonight, Rick, would put him into the next round. And that's what he needs. He's below that cut line by 35 points before this race starts. So an uphill climb for him. All right, Steve, give us some numbers on this night race. Well, we all know about the excitement and the grueling challenge that the Bristol racetrack is. A half mile, high banked, high speeds, 500 laps, a little over 266 miles. Stage one and stage two, both 125 laps. That leaves a final stage of 250 laps. A long final stage, half the race. Fuel window, over 150 laps. So stage one and stage two, no problem. That final stage will absolutely require a pit stop. All right, Steve, so the fuel window is 150 to 160, but what about these tires? Uh, we saw in the Xfinity Series last night, tires lasted. Old tires actually won the race. Yeah, old tires won the race last night in the Xfinity Series. Now the Cup Series is next gen, a very different tire. It's a bigger wheel, but much the same. In practice, some of the fastest laps were run 35, 40, 45 laps on the tires. So this is going to be a little throwback. Elliot Sadler throwback. Remember when Elliot Sadler <laughs> won it on old, old, old tires? This is going to be a grind. You heard Elliot, or Chase Elliott already concerned about where he starts yep. because I don't think we're going to see a lot of pit stops. These drivers are going to have to figure it out out on the racetrack. Cars making their way back out onto the track after coming onto pit road and checking their pit road speed. Leading the field with some unique views is the Coca Cola pace car cam. So we'll be able to check this view out as everyone falls in behind the pace car few other cool onboards that we're going to ride along with and one of those is the number eight of Tyler Reddick the Cheddars and it's on the spoiler Steve and, and this spoiler is going to get a workout right here this look uh, Bristol new Bristol old Bristol basically they spray the bottom with this sticky stuff way earlier in the week we've seen a truck race we've seen an Xfinity race at some point maybe even here in the middle of stage one they're going to be right up against the fence this right rear spoiler is going to give you a great shot you know, the best shot's this one right here. Eric Amarola set it on the pole, the Ford Performance Cam. He's going to have a great shot when this green flag stops. I know that's the view he wants all night long. It's going to be hard to keep it. So, Rick, you, you mentioned a must win for Kevin Harvick. Now, mathematically, it isn't. But re realistically, yeah. it really is because it's not just minus 35, but minus 35 behind all of those drivers. If it was only one driver, you could say, oh, man, if it was just Chase Briscoe or just Austin Dillon, maybe they have an issue. Kevin Harvick has a great night. He can make up 35 points. But conceivably to think Briscoe, Dillon, Bush, and then even Sindrick or Reddick would all have to have issues, that's asking a lot. So I do think the mentality is a, is a must win. If you look at Ross Chastain and then go up the board, all those guys, what they're looking for tonight is clean, simple, nothing that goes wrong. If they have that, they're in good shape. From there down, it is a dogfight. They're going to have to treat every stage, every lap as it's the last one. If not, you'll find yourself not moving to the next round. Oh, much like last night, we saw the front row swap. Junior, surprise you, or would you take the outside as well as the pole sitter? Well, I, the outside's been the best to restart in the truck race and the Xfinity race, and I think that's what we'll see tonight, especially as this track widens out and that top becomes more and more preferred, which I think is going to happen about midway through this first stage. Happened in the second stage last night. It's going to happen quicker tonight. That outside groove is going to be where the leader wants to control the start. Chase Briscoe will be on the inside listening to his radio. Boys, know what we need to do tonight. I don't want to go to battle with anybody else. Get the best six or your best guys up on the box. I want nothing more to go get a picture, take it with all you guys on top of that building at the end of the night. That's what we're trying to do. With sword in hand as the fireworks are working their way around this half mile. The last great Coliseum, the site of the cut race for round number one of the Cup Series as they are fighting for a championship. 
Green flags in the air. We're racing at Bristol. Already seeing that outside line. Performing really well. Denny Hamlin sliding into second place, and he's going to use that middle to try to continue to move forward. Felt so good in three and four. He's going to run it one and two back to the bottom of the racetrack. The Hinder Tractor is giving us this view on board with Briscoe as he's fallen back to that third spot now. Blaney just behind him. Blaney to the middle of the racetrack. Going to try to get on the outside. It's 14 right there. Jumps in the gas. Forces the 14 to have to come out of the throttle on a corner exit. Beats him down the straightaway. Again, 14 will struggle off corner here. He surprised the 14 of Briscoe. He's not going to surprise him this, though, this time, though. Briscoe's going to try to get oh, in the throttle. Wow, Blaney gave him no room whatsoever. Foreshadowing there, guys. We saw a pass already early in this race on the outside. Oh, it's going to happen. We know the group's going to move to the outside. Yeah, I mean, all the way back in the pack, the back half of the pack, a lot of guys way up the racetrack using that high groove. It's another guy using that top as well. Kyle Larson running the middle around the outside of Brad Kozlowski is going to take this position. And Larson moves up into the seventh spot ahead of Brad Kozlowski, Ross Chastain behind them. A lot of guys making up a lot of ground in the back half of the field here in this high lane. Just a matter of time before the spotters and everybody starts telling their drivers about it. And what gets difficult though is when everybody starts going up there, not all the cars are good. And you, you know, when you first jumped up there, you had an advantage, but once you get double wide, it's really nowhere to go. There was a traction compound put on the bottom of the racetrack, that bottom groove, but it was put on before an ARCA race and a truck race and an Xfinity race and never applied again. Is that wearing out now? Yeah, I think it just loses its, you know, loses its grip. Still seems to be working really well, but that top has been ground years ago. And as the cars go up there and run, it really takes rubber much quicker than any other part of this racetrack. And when that top takes rubber, it too grips up. Look at these guys chasing it way up the racetrack. They're gonna get higher and higher right against the wall in the middle of three and four before the end of the night. Remember when they first ground that upper lane, it was a one groove racetrack. There was nowhere to run but the very, very top impossible to pass. They've put that traction compound on the bottom to spread the grooves out, to give an advantage, an advantage to one for a period of time, then an advantage to the other. Drivers searching around looking all night long. Coca-Cola camera on Denny Hamlin giving us this view back to Ryan Blaney. These two have been the fastest two cars on the racetrack lap after lap. Blaney's got a high entry, low exit, trying to get underneath Denny going into one. Denny's going to give him room right here. But now Denny's in the preferred line on the top. He can fight this off if he wants to. He can make this really difficult on Blaney. Right here. Oh. Blaney can't get to the throttle unless, if, if he stays at the throttle, he drives into the 11 car. So he has to lift. Well, you say he can drive it into the 11 car, especially if Blaney keeps cutting down on people like that. That's his second driver that Blaney's given no room to whatsoever early in this race. How aggressive do you need to be early on here? And for Ryan Blaney, here's a driver who currently is in good position, 72 points above the cut line. Watch this, Rick. Watch this 11 car. He's going to try this top a little bit. Let's see. It's going to take him a few laps. Watch that run. He gets down the front straight away. He likes that. Now back to the bottom of the racetrack. I wish he would have kept running up there. Looked like a couple more corners. He about figured it out. I love this look back at Danny Hamlin and the back work to the he's top. doing behind the wheel as he goes to the top. Junior, the drivers are talking about the force the actual steering wheel has taken. This new car, the steering of it, the downforce, the bigger tires, the combination of all three, just physically tougher to drive. It'll be interesting to see how it affects the drivers all night. Yeah, like an arm wrestling all night long. Yeah. Hopefully they get out tired, wore out. We know these cars are going to take abuse too. It's you know We've seen this race car fail in some difficult situations throughout the season difficult part and all these new parts and stuff that they've maintained throughout the year have never experienced a race at Bristol. Yeah, remember the last time the Cup Series was here, it was on dirt, so a completely different feel for the cars and drivers. Old Danny, man, he's smart. He's moving around. He's going to find where this car wants to run. 
Briscoe Bell, right here. Bell trying to take the spot away from Briscoe. Again, Briscoe was up there on the front row running in the fourth spot now, but Bell has put a lot of pressure on him. I haven't said anything, but Eric Amarola continuing to lead. This has been an impressive weekend for that 10 car and that team. He's had speed and obviously qualifying up front, but that speed is in that car as he maintains the lead and a comfortable lead at that. Dave, what you got on the 11 car? Well, to Rick's point about this place being covered in dirt earlier this year, this is the first time these guys have used these cars on this pavement. And it was a big challenge, according to Denny Hamlin's crew chief, Chris Gabehart. But he said Denny took to it right away, has a great feel for this place. And you can see here already testing the lines in the 11 car. Big challenge for these teams here. These are the three who've got it right so far. A little bit higher up the racetrack, the 10 of Eric Almirola, and that closes the gap now from first to second as Denny Hamlin has closed into two car lengths. You're going to look in the mirror and see that 11 car closer, and he's probably not going to try that again. Back to the bottom of the racetrack. Denny can't follow him. The dirty air is no good. He's going to have to go wherever this 10 car doesn't go to try to get some downforce, some grip in this 11 car. Up to the top of the racetrack he goes. And we're seeing now from that Ford performance on board that he's pulling away from Denny Hamlin. Yeah. Most laps led tonight for Eric Almirola than all of his 2022 20, combined. Denny doesn't like the top of one and two. He's not really wanting to run up there. Right now getting the battle here from the 12 car. He's made the high line work in three and four though. He's actually got some good pace there, but in one and two it's not working. And already the leaders have found traffic. Eric Almirola already lapped the 78. Here goes the uh, 11 and the 12 and some of that traffic are playoff cars Suarez and Austin Dillon just in front of the leaders so 27 laps in and some playoff implications already you see the 22 of Logano he's lost some spots he's down to 18 he's had a lot of pressure coming from behind he's been struggling a little bit Kyle Busch he's driving forward Marty he has gained one spot, Jeff, and I talked to Ben Bayshore about how they're approaching this race, coming in barely below the cut line. He's been told me, honestly, it's three races in one for us. This first stage is massive for us in the 18 team. We have to get stage points because we know Chase Briscoe struggled second. He's likely going to get stage points, and we have to match that. So they have to come up through the field and then how quickly they have to do it. And Jeff, he also said something interesting in his interview. He said, I have to get comfortable with being loose. What does he mean by that? here at Bristol. Well, what he was talking about, Marty, is that, you know, this car, especially this this year's car, is very hard to drive when the back of the car is not attached to the racetrack. Feeling like it wants to spin out, it's hard to be aggressive with that. So in order to go fast all night long, if you don't have a little bit of that, eventually it's never going to turn. It's not going to turn like you want it to. So he thinks you're going to have to have that car loose so that it's good on a long run. Blaney up to second, Almirola leading. You're watching NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Bristol. It's the Bass Pro Shops night race.
NASCAR on in USA is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Toyota, let's go places. Northern Tool and Equipment. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. And by Bass Pro Shops. Sportsmen serving sportsmen for 50 years. New leader at Bristol, and that would be Ryan Blaney. He was able to get by Denny Hamlin. Eric Almirola has fallen back to the third spot now. Chase Briscoe running fourth. Christopher Bell is fifth. Side flag here, boys. Right front. Oh, the 15. Oh, we got, we got the 21 yeah. on the racetrack, the 15 as well with the right front flat. Yeah, it's a tire down on the 21, and now the caution has come out. All right, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. That's J.J. Yaley in the 15. They both, it seemed like, I think both those cars had right fronts go down at the same time. Ooh. Wonder what the, what was going on with that, Steve? I don't know, but the right rear on this 21 cart is missing the lettering as well, so I don't know if he hit the wall before or after the right front went down. Yeah, he went into turn three and had his tire problem and went up, got in the wall, and then the 15 had his problem down the straight. Interesting. Right yeah. side tires and right out of his pit stall. Yeah, so I wonder if it's a wear thing or maybe there's something on the racetrack. Seems kind of odd. Let's take a look. Yeah, a lot of the tire issues that we've had this year aren't aren't tire. They, they take a while to develop. Uh, you know, it takes several laps for this, you know, for a tire to fail, right? This could be. Uh, something the teams might need to be concerned with as far as low air pressures and so forth. Yeah, so the best way to think about it is a sidewall on the tread, like, like a little bit of a 90 degree. Picture a coat hanger. If you bend it enough time, the coat hanger breaks. Well, if you run too low in air, that corner of the tire it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and time after time after time it gets hot, it springs a leak, and then to your point, Dale, over time it gets low, 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 and finally goes flat. Um, too much camber, too much toe, not enough air pressure. Multiple things go into this. Definitely some wall contact, but like we said, is this before or after? Uh, checking the toe link right there and the steering and making sure everything's still working for this 15 car JJ Yaley. So they got the right side tires changed there. You can download the official app of NASCAR and follow the action with free live scoring in car cameras as well as radio broadcasts. Search NASCAR in your app store to download and start a free trial. And now the parade coming to Pitt Road, and they're headed right at you, Marty. Kevin Harvick said his car was building free, fairly happy with the handling of it, though. He did say, though, the brakes are shaking like crazy. They have a definite wobble to them. We'll certainly keep an eye on that, Kim. And in the middle there, Kyle Larson told crew chief Cliff Daniels he needs help on the entry, just two free. It's going to be four tires and Sunoco fuel right there on the bottom. Chase Briscoe said he was just way too tight, couldn't do anything with it. The last seven laps, he told his team it felt like his power steering went out, Dave. Leader Lorian Blaney all the way around turns three and four. A hard left turn into his stall. He'll get four Goodyear tires and Snowco fuel just a little bit loose. As for Denny Hamlin, his car was migrating to the tight side on the exit of the corners to get an adjustment for that. Dylan Christopher Bell started off a little bit tight on this run, but by the end of it, he said, we are really, really good. No changes, four tires and fuel for Bell. And here's the race off pit road. Almost a dead heat coming off of pit road, but it was Hamlin by inches in front of Ryan Blaney. We'll get ready for the restart.
And welcome back to Bristol as we get ready for the restart, riding along with Eric Almirola, that Ford Performance on board. And Eric Almirola's car is showcasing the new Blue Oval City paint scheme. This all-new electric vehicle and battery manufacturing campus is in West Tennessee. This will be home to Ford's next all-new electric truck and will produce batteries for future Ford and Lincoln vehicles with production beginning in 2025. And again, Eric Almirola was up front here earlier today. As we see the cars choose right here. Uh, everybody kind of gets stacked up because you can't hit that orange box, but we've had a handful of cars stay on the racetrack. Brad Kozlowski, uh, Bubba Wallace, Busher, Reddick, Suarez, and LaJoy. The top six cars have stayed on the racetrack. Bowman didn't. You see down there that little dash, but he came to pit road. He's running 13th. Yes, Steve, we talked about thinking that these tires were not losing much speed during a run. Well, we're getting ready to find out because Guys that were leading this race, they did pit. Top front three rows did not. Yeah, and you think about where some of those cars were running. Brad had decent track position, but like Suarez were, was getting close to going a lap down. So we'll see if this pays off for the 99. Field approaching the Geico restart zone. Again, Kozlowski Wallace up front. And not a great start there for Bubba Wallace in the 45. Brad Kozlowski surges out ahead. You will see that all night long. That inside line is going to struggle all the way back through the field. Everybody's given up a couple rows or a couple positions just to take that outside line. It looks like Busher is going to be able to clear Bubba Wallace. So Busher moves up to second. Wallace third. Tyler Reddick is fourth. Corey LaJoy out of Spire Motorsports back there in the fifth position. I mean, Matt Suarez is struggling being one of the last cars on old tires. Got all these guys right on his heels with new tires. Not a fun position to be in for this 99. And they are pushing him. You feel like you're in the way. You're trying to do your best to find some pace. You're trying to get somewhere on this racetrack. There's nowhere to hide. Look at that car bouncing in the back end off into turn one, Dylan. And they've been having that problem all weekend, Junior. Daniel said that was their issue yesterday. The car just bounced, and he couldn't get it to turn. They're battling that again. Daniel said it's just way too tight. They told him, stop the bleeding. we got to stay inside the top 15 here. So that's the goal for stage one. Well, he qualified 29th, and he was running 29th. When the caution came out, he stayed out, and now he's trying to get some track position. The reason he was running 29th is because of the bouncing, the poor handling car. And older tires is not going to help that. Oh, goodness. That can't feel good inside the car. I mean, what we can see, it's 10 times worse in the seat. But to your point, Jeff, right, 29th is kind of the, the, the line for this 99, right? If we run 30 laps here and he falls back to 20th, was he going to drive from 29th to 20th? Because it didn't look like it in the first 40 laps of the race. On the outside of Chase Briscoe. Briscoe hugging that yellow line on the inside. And Briscoe still trying to hold off that 99. Kim? And some complications for him during his pit stop. We reported that he felt like his power steering went out. Well, I checked it with the team. They said it's a problem they felt like they've had for a few weeks. And it's not unmanageable. And it's just very, very stiff and hard to turn that wheel. Briscoe currently in the 11th position. Not unmanageable might be a matter of opinion. I'm not sure if Chase Briscoe is going to think that as fast and as loaded as this racetrack is. Look who's also coming to the picture here. Uh, teammate there at Stuart Haas Racing. The four of Kevin Harvick. Looks like that car's coming back to life. Yeah, and look at the 99. While the bounce, it kind of continues. He's finding a little bit of pace off this top. Dale, really, I, the top seems like maybe that helps those old tires a little bit, keeps the momentum up. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's so hard for the guy on the bottom to make the pass because he can't use the throttle. Now they're, you know, see that car up there in front of him, the seven running the bottom, that's Corey LaJoy. Use that car as a pick there and get some clean air. Right in front of him, there's no other car, so he'll have all kinds of clean air in front of him that'll help him as well. This is a battle right now for third place between Reddick, Wallace, they're swapping that back and forth. A little wiggle there out of Reddick in the eight as Bubba Wallace driving the 45. 
Interesting how Tyler Reddick is seen running the low line here. He's one of those drivers that's not afraid to run the high line in the eight car. We'll see how that works over the course of the evening. Wallace still with the advantage here. Reddick for his part during that run. It was tight across the bottom, three up top to start. Then it migrated tight overall, especially over the bumps in one and two. He's the highest running playoff driver right now. Did not stop on that pit round. 13 laps in, now 14 laps in since the restart. Old tires still hold the top four positions. Keep that in mind. We get a late caution, a little bit of a shootout. Last night, Noah Gregson on nearly 100 lap tires won that Xfinity Series race. These crew chiefs right here paid attention. I know it's a different tire, but it looked the same in practice. These old tires are still holding on really well for the guys that have the cleaner air, Marty. Nice battle between the Austins, both playoff drivers further back, Austin Sendrick in 22nd, Austin Dillon in 23rd. On their last stop, Austin Sendrick's team lost nine positions. Steve, they got the wedge wrench stuck in the back window. So if you're Jeremy Bullins calling the rest of this race, does that take a page out of your playbook for adjustments of Austin Sendrick moving forward? Would you be hesitant to make a wedge adjustment knowing, hey, that's a tight fit for that wedge wrench? Yeah, that would be concerning for sure. But with, with, with so many laps left in the race, I'm not... Sure, you could just take that adjustment off the table. I mean, we know the groove's going to move around. These concrete tracks change dramatically, and we're talking 434 to go. So um, this is where it comes down to communication and honesty. Go to that pit crew member. Like, could you have done it any better, or do we have an issue? Let's really talk through this. Can you put grease on that and say, hey, is that something that could help out if that make we make sure it doesn't stick in there? Absolutely. I'll take any idea that allows me to still make wedge adjustments under these pit stops. Looks as though. The field starting to move up the racetrack now. That high line has become the preferred line for most of these competitors as Keselowski is still holding out at the top spot. Busher, Wallace, Hamlin, and Reddick the top five. Reddick still trying to hold off Eric Almarola. Eric's rolling around that bottom. And he's got to start putting some, playing some defense because he's got. Blaney catching him from behind. So you have to kind of, you're trying to make a pass on a car, but you also see the car behind you catching you, and that changes what you're able to do. Dylan. And Dale, we just heard some radio or a report about Chase Briscoe possibly having some steering issues. Here's another Stuart Haas car, maybe with a similar issue. Take a listen. My steering's doing what Chase talked about last week. Good for Trying to rip it out of my hands in the middle of the corner. So that's obviously not ideal anywhere, but we've talked a lot tonight about how hard the loading is going to be and how hard it's going to be to drive these cars when they're driving well. Not going to be easy when you have a steering issue. So not only are you fighting this track, you're fighting against 35 other competitors, but now your car is fighting against you as well as you're trying to turn. Keselowski out front has almost a one second lead over Chris Buescher running in the second spot here at Bristol. Laps complete here from Bristol Motor Speedway. When you take a look at that top 10 running order, notice the 12 of Ryan Blady currently in the sixth position. Blady is the only playoff driver that has yet to get a win this season. He had three last year, but has not been able to do it in 2022. It's consistency and strong finishes that have got this 12 team to this point. 36 points above the cut line. All Ryan has to do today is earn 20 points to advance to the round of 12, which shouldn't be a problem. He's earned at 
at least 20 points in 24 of 28 races this season. But in talking to Ryan, as far as consistency and as far as momentum goes, he does feel like they're going to need to get a win this season if they can make sure they can compete for a championship in Phoenix. as Brad Keselowski continues to lead. Bush are running in the second spot. We got a car in the wall, the yeah, two. Yeah, the two of Austin two. Sendrick got right up into the tire. wall. Yeah, I think he, does he have a right front down as well? This a, could, would be the third flat right front. Yep, says he had a right front flat, Steve, and he's trying to get a hole to come down. I can't imagine how frustrating that must be as a driver, Jeff. There's the hole to get Austin Sendrick down. Now he's got to come all the way back around to his side of pit road. And I don't know if coincidence or just bad luck. Rick all three down. Fords, the 21 of Harrison Burton, a Rick Ware racing car, and now the two of Sendrick. Three Fords, three flat right fronts. This is huge for Sendrick. He was not that great in points any Anyway, this is a major setback, Marty. Yes, you're right, Jeff. Came in below the cut line. This is going to be a huge setback for Austin Zindrick. A green flag stop at Bristol will normally lose you two spots at least. Jeremy Bowens making the call, though, for four Goodyear tires here to make sure they got it. They did see it with the right front flat. Austin Zindrick, his playoffs in jeopardy now after losing multiple laps here at Bristol. We'll see how many exactly he loses, Rick. So now let's just make sure the two knows he can leave off pit road. Let's take a look at it right here. Yeah, flat right front tire. Just, oh man, straight up the hill. It definitely just went flat. It looks almost identical to what we saw in the 21 car. And the two did. I was bringing up pit road because it's easy to make a mistake here. It's a long pit road under yellow. Under green, you only have to run your half, front or back stretch. Thank goodness because the two cars still three laps down. If he had to run the entire pit road, it'd have been five or six laps down. But the young rookie, very wise. He knows it's a bad situation, but only ran his straightaway, Marty, that did save them at least a lap. And Steve, I think this is extremely important to note. Austin Cedric just told Jeremy Bowens on the radio, I had no contact with anybody at any point. Boy, if you're a crew chief and you hear that, we are now 90 laps into this race. I'm sure everyone on pit road is now concerned. Steve, we've talked camber, too, about these cars, and some people run a little more aggressive, but is it coincidence? Oh, we got another right front flat in the 12. And Ryan it's another Blaney. board, another oh, board. spins behind him, contact into the wall as well. And the caution comes out this time. Eric Almarola spinning in that 10. So to your I'm point, Rick, it, about the Fords, they, you know, they all share information. So whatever they believe, air pressure, camber settings, toe settings, I don't think it is. I don't know if they are all just randomly going down, right? These are all the same manufacturer. Yep. I don't think it's a like forward issue as far as aero or something specific. It's more of an information Steve. concern, right? We are we are literally around the same lap. Where you know we're 45 laps in, we had the two right front tires on the 15 and the 21. Now we're about 40 laps, 45 laps into the next run since that pit stop where we're seeing tires again. So around 40 to 45 laps is when these tires are starting to give these guys issues. So you watch the 12 go up. That's pretty hard contact. There yes. might be suspension damage. And then the 10 spins out just because it's, you know, everything's happening so fast. Dale, to your point, I believe these tires are being damaged early when the air pressure is the lowest, right? That's when the damage is happening. It takes 40 something laps for this to become a big, big issue. And now we have the 12 sitting off pit road and I think he has lost a wheel. Yes, he did lose a wheel. Oh Actually, man. That wheel rolled down into the pit box of the three car. No left rear wheel, no left rear tire on that car. So this is gonna be a big issue because right here, they will see all the hands waving. The left rear is not tight. This rule has been updated, but yep. this right here will be a penalty. It's updated to think if your tire stays in your pit box, no big deal, but that is a big deal. Yes. It went down, you start to hit the wall in the three pit, very dangerous situation. Hopefully nobody was hurt from that equipment. Dale, back to your point, right? 45 laps, we've had a Rick Ware Ford, we've had the 21, the two, and now the 12. They all share information. Now it is, what can you change here? Camber, you're kind of locked in. Can you get enough air pressure in it to, to bring yourself to a comfortable level. This is this is the, we talked about Bristol. Hey, you know, what don't we know? Well, now we know that the right front tires are susceptible to damage. And I would, since it's being consistent with one 
factory. Yeah. I would say it's some sort of setting. With this trouble, only 12 points above the cut line now for Ryan Blaney, who coming in here looked as though he was in pretty good position. Steve, I would think that would force you on a pit road right here, too. Like, if you are forward sharing that information, I don't see how you can keep running. I think you got to change tires and make some sort of air pressure adjustment. Well, Joey Logano, right? He's the he's the the last guy on standing, Marty. Boy, what a flip of developments here. Kevin Harvick having a check up there for uh, Todd Gillen coming off of pit road. He said his car was better, still a little bit tight, but Rodney Childers did tell him, listen, two cars lost tires within a few laps of each other. So you got to wonder if another Ford made adjustments there, Dave. Toyota on the top of the screen, Denny Hamlin running fine, moved his way back up toward the front. Uh, after that first stop, they'll make another one here. Four more Goodyear tires, Dylan. Dave, Chris Buescher on the bottom of the screen didn't pit at the first yellow. They'll come in here and pit this time. Was running second, said his car was pretty good up front when he had a little bit cleaner air. We'll see what he does here, mired in traffic. Not a good sign right here. The hood of the 10 up for Eric Almirola. Ninety six laps complete here from Bristol Motor Speedway. More tire troubles for the Ford camp, including the two of Austin Cindric, a playoff driver. Austin was one of the only playoff drivers to not have an issue at this point in the playoffs, but he can no longer say that. And in talking to Austin just a few weeks ago about preparations for Bristol, this was one of the things he mentioned. One of the unknowns that teams were anticipating, trying to figure out how to prepare. This is what Austin said specifically. It's, I think it's a, the biggest challenge on the, in the playoffs as far as like racetracks that we're going to with question marks throughout the week because um, there's there's no gauge on tire fall off there's no gauge on how traffic's going to race there's no gauge on race car setup there's no gauge on what lanes we're going to be able to run hell we don't even know what the track prep's going to be like so um, from that standpoint there's the most unknowns right Bristol. That two team brought it down pit road, made a four tire change. We'll have to see how that fares the rest of this race. The all new two for five dollar menu at Sonic. Choose two classics, the Fritos chili cheese wrap, small jumbo popcorn chicken, or a quarter pound double cheeseburger. For just five bucks, the two for five dollar menu only at Sonic or in the app. The 22 of Joey Logano, Dave, looked like he had to come back to pit road. More mistakes, Rick. The left rear tire, the left rear wheel was not secured on this Ford. No other reports of tire damage on the 22, but the left rear was not secured. They had to come back down. They changed the entire wheel and tire assembly out. By the way, the 11 of Denny Hamlin running strong tonight. He's in a Toyota. His crew chief, Chris Gabehart, is watching this situation very carefully. Listen run down on the 12. We have had no known issues in our camp. We've done everything we can due diligence wise to confirm that, but definitely worried about right front load here. Steve, it gets your attention, doesn't it? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, and like what Chris Gabehart said, everything we know, I mean, everyone down here is in a real hustle, so they're on their communication, talking to their warms, Jeff, trying to make sure everybody has the same information. Concerned about right front load, the only way to back that off is slow down. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's from the driver. That's What's the, the other only option? thing that yeah. he can do is slow down. Are you telling your driver to slow down or are you telling him to roll? No, I no. Need, I can. need option B, please. All right, Tyler Reddick on the inside and Brad Keselowski on the outside. Keselowski easily taking the top spot. Here comes Christopher Bell in the 20, and he'll take second away. And that Kyle Busch made it three wide in the middle of one and two. He is picking a ton of spots up right here. Kyle Busch up to third now. What that, a restart by Kyle. Yeah, that outside line working as we see Chase Briscoe in the 14 also taking another spot. Marty. 
Remember what Ben Bayshore said to me earlier today, and I just reported a little while ago, stage one is huge to us. The car we have to beat, the 14 car of Chase Briscoe. Kyle Busch with an incredible restart. They did not hit last time, 24 to go in the stage, and they look like they could get stage points exactly the way they planned it out. How about that? Well, 24 to go. Hopefully it'll stick with the plan. I love that call. You see the five on the bottom, the eight run on the top. Just remind everybody on the left-hand side, Brad Keselowski and Tyler Reddick, 102 laps. We've seen these right front issues on the Fords. Keselowski in a Ford. He has the same set of tires from the beginning of the race, continues to lead. So the durability as far as grip is there. It's just a question if there's another setting that are causing these flats. As we see the five of Larson trying to get by the eights of Tyler Reddick. And he'll complete the pass. Spark still coming out behind the 12. What's going on here, Steve? I don't know what he has. He's had a missing left rear tire, plus he had a flat right front. Something is obviously bent and dragging. They're Remember, just... he hit the right side wall oh, pretty yeah, hard. Very hard. It looks like something under the right half of the car, like something in the right rear suspension can bend with these coilovers and actually change the height of the car significantly. He's... Something is dragging. This is going to be a long 20 laps for Blaney. I think he can go 20 laps. I don't yeah. know if it'll make it that long. He came in plus 36, and right now, Blaney has moved down. He's only 16 ahead of the line. And now everyone else is scared to death, right? You see this car sparking. Going to bend, You're probably going to break. There you go. Feels like something's bent, probably going to break. And all these other cars, you can't. This isn't Michigan. You just can't tiptoe by him. It, it, it's like rush hour traffic. Yeah, in a fishbowl. Steve, it sounded like he said toe link, and we've heard that so many times at different racetracks. The toe link bends, and could it be something that's causing sparks? I think it's the lower control arm or something that actually can adjust the height. The toe really only affects where this right rear corner is pointed. That shouldn't make the car travel more. It's remember we saw Chase Elliott at Darlington bent the actual suspension components. That would have a car yeah, lower I mean, than the ground. Far, so what are you going to do? Hey, his point is, what are you going to do? You, if you pit under green and fix it, you're done. Right? You know, what they're hoping for now is to get a caution and not be the caution and then hopefully try to fix it. Now the left side's dragging as well. Yeah, so, I mean, they have a big issue they're going to have to fix. The real question is, I believe they're off the DVP. They've definitely run a 17-second lap. So now they won't be out of the race. I know that doesn't help, Jeff, but at least you get to continue. If you can milk it for 15 laps without whatever the issue is breaking, and then just stop under the yellow, you're going to lose more laps. But but at this point, you have to yeah, whatever it is. Whatever's going on is getting before. worse and worse. Like the, the back guess. of the car yes. is getting lower and yep. lower and lower. Whatever's bent. Is I mean, bent. it's so bad. The left front tire is off the ground right yeah, there, he, right? When he's on the brakes. He came onto the apron now. He's on pit road. So they're going to the pit box now, Dave. He's in now. See what they can do. You see the wedge wrench is going in there. They're changing the entire setup in the back of that car, hoping it'll just stay up off the track, Steve. Well, and there's only so much adjustment. These coilover shocks have basically a little hydraulic thing that you adjust. It's not like jack screws like the old car. So depending on how you set them, there's a little bit of wiggle room. But there's only just a minimum and maximum you can raise the back of this car. And it's not a lot, Rick. It's like a half an inch, like the thickness of your finger. That's it. Once you get it that high, you're going to have to stop, jack it up, and make some manual adjustments. How about Brad Kozlowski, yeah. who just goes by the 12? He has yet to come to pit road. I'm not. That's my kind of pit strategy. That's the easiest thing I can do from the top of the pit box is drink water and just stay on the racetrack. Great call right here from the sixth car. Matt McCall, I know they're, you know, first year together or first year together at RFK. And there he is on the bottom, a late model racer himself, driven a lot of cars. and. Like Brad, could he be the big upset? We've seen two non-playoff drivers, Jeff. Could Brad Kozlowski make it three in a row? And Blaney gotten really slow again. That's something's that's broke. Yeah, they've made some, whatever did, they did, you know, raising the car up has made it worse. NASCAR is going to get fed up with this and really quick. Yeah, the back end of that car is dragging. It is getting lower and lower. You mentioned Chief. Hey guys, Crew Chief Jonathan Hassler told me before the start of this race today, the one thing that we have to avoid is early trouble. We need right stage tire. Points. Yep, and he's going to come back again, Junior. This is the early trouble they wanted to avoid so badly. Right rear tire's flat. And NASCAR has posted him for not making a minimum. Broken. I don't know what you're going to do to so it. So now the tow link's broken. Yep. So there was a suspension item. Now I think it's the tow link as well. Look, if this car just needs to go behind the wall, change the suspension, they're going to go 25, 50 laps down and hope there's a lot of attrition. I know that's hard to say, but that's, that's all they have left. 
make the necessary repairs before you are eliminated from the race. Under five laps to go in stage one. And as you mentioned, Brad Kozlowski out in front has just a two tenth of a second lead over Christopher Bell. You see how close it is. Bell again already locked into the next round. But wouldn't it be great to get another playoff point if Christopher Bell could get in front of Brad Kozlowski to win this stage. The bottom of the racetrack he's made up the ground again now three laps to go here at Bristol in stage one. Brad has not come off the bottom of the racetrack this entire run. Here he goes to the top. Trying to find some speed. Bell has to go to the bottom. Stay out of that dirty air. Brad, oh, a little bit loose right there. Under two laps to go. Kozlowski trying to hold off Bell. It's Kozlowski, Bell, Kyle Busch, Briscoe, and Larson. They're all in the top five. The final lap of stage one. Bowman, Busher, Reddick, Byron, and Martin Trex Jr. in the top ten. Coming out of four for the final time, and Keslowski is going to win the stage here at Bristol. First stage win for Brad Keslowski in 2022 as the work continues on Ryan Blaney on pit road. Four leaders today, none with 2022 wins. That means 18 different winners already. Could it be 19? Stage one is complete and it is Brad Kislowski who is your stage winner. Christopher Bell coming in second, grabbing those stage points. Christopher, again, the only driver officially locked into the round of 12, coming off his win in the first race of the playoffs. Now, Bell didn't get the stage win, but quick fun fact about that. In the last 13 short track races, that stage one winner has not gone on to win the race. Something to think about here as we watch these final two stages. Bristol, it's the Bass Pro Shops Night Race as the field making their way on the pit road, buddy. Rick, I'm sure if Ben Bayshore drew up a play in the dirt earlier today, it would look a lot like this. Kyle Busch started 21st, eight stage points. That's huge for this 18 team who came in below the cut line. He said, I can feel it starting to hurt the right front really bad. I need a big adjustment for a longer run, Kim. First stop of the night for Brad Keselowski. Just said it's a little bit tight and his front tires chattering over the bumps. You see them finishing service there. Chase Briscoe on the bottom said balance not bad. Three and four, he's pretty good. He needs to work on one and two. It just bottoms out sometimes, Dave. Tyler Reddick stayed out the entire stage. Three stage points for him. He needs them as well. He'll get four tires here. The left rear he felt was bottoming out. Dylan. In the middle of your screen, Christopher Bell still pretty happy with his race car. Just said he was a little bit loose off the top. They were debating an air pressure adjustment, but no major changes on the 20. Alex Bowman at the bottom of your screen, no changes for him. He was just sliding over the rubber on that run. Risco gaining three spots. Legato, the big winner there, only two tire stop.
getting ready to start stage two here at Bristol, but I'm here now with the director of racing for Goodyear, Greg Stucker. Greg, we've already seen some issues on the track in regards to tires. What can you tell me about this unique tire setup for Bristol? Well, you know, Bristol's a half mile racetrack, but it, it doesn't race like any other half mile in the country. It's uh, extremely high banked, which leads to a lot of speed and a lot of load. So from a tire perspective, we actually treat it like a speedway and, and not a short track. So, you know, we make sure we've got a construction that's durable. We make sure we, you know, we work with the teams to make sure their setups are right, make sure they got plenty of air pressure in the tires, make sure they're not aggressive on their suspension settings. And, uh, and we'll continue to do that throughout the course of the night because, you know, like I said, we've seen a couple issues. We, we feel like we know what that is, and uh, we'll work with the teams to make sure we get some adjustments made. Thanks for the time, Greg. I appreciate the insight. You bet. Get ready to start stage two here at Bristol. Hits the wall. He's put on the damage vehicle policy. That's a 10-minute clock. He then goes out, runs minimum speed with the damaged car. That doesn't just reset it to zero. That eliminates it. You're no longer on the clock. And for that reason, he can really sit here and make whatever changes he needs, but he just continues to lose laps, currently 19 laps down. And what we see right there laying on the ground, lower A-frame, looks like they may be changing. The seat. And when the car was out there on the racetrack sparking, and you talked about it, Steve, with the damage, uh, what would bend allow that car to travel more, right? So it's definitely the low ray frame and those suspension parts that allow that car to lay on the racetrack. That's right, that's where that shock is mounted. So if that, you know, if the foundation of your house moves, the whole thing settles, that's basically what happens. The low control arm bends, the whole car settles. Good, you just came by and said that last right front we took off was good. That's Rodney Childers giving that information to Kevin Harvick, who's on the inside, Busher on the outside. As we get back underway, stage two underway here. The night race at Bristol. You gotta tell your driver that information because he's nervous. He's seeing all these issues, and he's putting that up in his head, and it's going to bother him. Well, he also pitted on lap 95, so he didn't put on stickers right here, so he knows he's got to run these tires for a little while. Ross Chastain was at the bottom of the racetrack, just drifting way up high. And the battle back here in the middle of the pack is insane. You got guys way up against the wall. Look at the five of Larson going three wide. He has to back out right here. A lot of give and a lot of take. It's got to be equal. And when it gets unequal, that's when they have problems. At some point, they give you a shot and take your spot. But that ain't got to that point just yet. It's coming, though. It's only lap 137. It's only going to get more aggressive. Two by two here around Bristol. Todd Gillen in the 38, trying to make the move on the 42 of Ty Dillon. He's Todd good. stayed out. He pit it last on lap 95. Logano, he's the highest guy that did it, but he only put two tires on. Got a crash on the front straightaway. Car spinning around here, it's Burton. Get it back around. Right front tire down again. This is gonna be a long Right front's night. flat, I believe. Yeah, right front's flat. So now if you're this 21 car, you have to ask yourself, if you can't put enough air pressure in it or if that's going to have too much of a damage, then Brian Wilson needs to come up with a plan A or B. I mean, you hate to say it, but he's back on the lead lab. You see him spinning right here. I guess I don't know if the right front was down before or after. It might have went flat after the slide. It looks like it has air in it right there. Yeah. So. I would think if the right front was down, he wouldn't have been spinning. There. Yeah, I agree, Jeff. I just jumped to the right front. Now you, you the crew chief in me, I'm trigger happy to talk about tires going down because that's what I'm so concerned about. That looked like a separate issue. Harrison Burton bringing the 21 back onto pit road and to the attention of his crew. Harrison, one of the rookies in the field. Harrison's was a spin. But once again, a theme that we are seeing, right front tires going down.
the next generation of Wi-Fi. It's here with supercharged speeds, faster than a gig. Unbeatable internet, made to do anything so you can do anything. Xfinity, proud premier partner of NASCAR. Chase Elliott had an epic battle a year ago with Kevin Harvick. Ended up not working out for either of them as Kyle Larson ended up winning the race. Right now, Chase Elliott running in the 20th spot. And Harris and I had mentioned, you know, he had a flat tire earlier, but they're back on the lead lap. So even with that caution, you know, they're the last car on the lead lap. Now we're starting to land at Castle's going to get the free pass. He was multiple laps down. We have no one one lap down. No. Uh, that's not surprising here. Sometimes we see it, but it's been a, I call it a slow go to run the first 141 laps. I just think that makes Makes it just an even more exhausting night for these drivers. Just time in the car. The effort's still going to be there to run all the laps. 31 cars on the lead lap. And as you mentioned, the last one there is Harrison Burton. Four cautions come out. The most recent for Harrison. to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap and that is a fast one turned by Kevin Harvick at 15.326 seconds around this half mile track the old hockey fight the slash that turns into the wreck a little <laughs> bit later tape room working hard tonight a lot going on right here well, this is on board the 10 right here you're going to see a little contact with the two of Cindric. boom he's trying to save his car and unfortunately Real estate was at a minimum. He got into the left rear of the 21. So uh, I'm going to shove you into the fight and then walk away, Rick. And if you get the man, I'm sorry if it ends up bad for you. Yeah, once again, great job by uh, those folks down in our truck uh, finding that. That's what happens when you are on the pole and now you're back here in the middle of the mess in 29th, trying to work your way back to the front. Eric Amarola. So it's Busher and Harvick making up row one once again as the field approaching the Geico restart zone. Again, four cautions already. Busher on the outside, Harvick on the inside. Oh man, that was an interesting restart. Really good for the inside line. Almost looked like Cole Custer was pushing Harvick at yeah. that start. There's a lot of contact in both lanes. Busher just brought him real down, down real slow. Didn't try to really outlaunch them, just try to slow them all down right before we got the green. Bubba Wallace in the 45. The money line 45 of Wallace is on the outside, Cole Custer on the inside in the 41. And basically what I'm seeing right here, Steve, is you need to call this race kind of like a road course. As good as this tire is, as fast as you can be on, a, on an old tire, all you need to do is really just pitch yourself to cycle toward the front. Wow, look at the one car just went way to the top of the racetrack. 
When are you making your last pit stop? 150 to go? Yeah, absolutely. These guys that pit at 95 are going to try to go all the way to the end of stage two, I would assume. And then you, just like you said, it's all about when you make that last pit stop. And this one car continues to run up the racetrack. Money line on board here for the 45 of Bubba Wallace. That's exactly right, Junior. I'm doing the math backwards very quickly. I want to get that last set of tires on as soon as I can make it on fuel. Hey, Steve, let's debate that a little bit, though. If you're Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers, you're sitting in second. You're going to try to go, as you mentioned, 155 laps to the end of stage two. You're a Ford car, though. You've seen a couple of Fords have tire issues tonight. Is that worth the risk to be able to push it to the end of stage two on these good years? I don't think laps have anything to do with it. It's another issue, as Dale pointed out, the consistency or the, the, the kind of the consistent detail has been about lap 40 for the cars that have had a right front tire. We saw Brad Kozlowski easily run 125. So I think if your car is set up correctly, the Goodyear tires that came off Brad Kozlowski, the report from Kim Kuhn under caution was that they looked absolutely fine. So at this point, you can't call the race scared. You're going to have to go and run as long as you can on those tires. Plus for the four, Rick, he's still 19 points below the cut line. He needs to find victory lane. Steve, the other... You, the other variable in that equation is they know what setup they have in there and if it's similar to what the 12 had in it or if it's similar to what uh, the 21 had in it then you would say okay wait a minute we might need to worry about it but if you're similar to the six you're saying we think we're good well you're assuming they all know I mean, just because they're forwards I don't believe that RFK and Stuart Haas Racing and Penske share that much information if they do then the world has changed dramatically I think there's some <laughs> sharing of information but I would have a hard time living in the world if I just had to open my notebook for everybody that had the same manufacturer. There's Bubba Wallace painting the bottom of this racetrack as Ross Chastain taking an opposite line around here. Now Wallace goes up into Ross Chastain's line. Dave. Nice run for the most recent winner in that blue and black number 45. Bubba Wallace said his car was a little bit loose coming to the end of the stage. They made adjustments for that, and he said love it as they restarted in stage two. One thing to keep in mind, he had two different restarts. One where he restarted in second gear, didn't like it at all. Restarting in first was a little bit better, so keep an eye on that. It's good when your driver says love it. Chris Buescher out in front. Harvick, Hamlin, Wallace, Chastain, the top five. There's a fight for the 10th spot. Logano in the 22 trying to get by Bowman in that 48. Bowman had great speed in practice. Thought he had a really, you know, this is a team that doesn't really have a lot of pace this year. Showed up this weekend looking really, really fast. Can put together a good race tonight to get a lot of points. Well, Larson also had great pace in practice, and he hasn't been able to really work themselves toward the front. Yeah, if they're, if they're just limited to running this bottom, they're not going to go anywhere. They're going to need to figure out a way to get that track position. Otherwise, just passing on that bottom has proved difficult. You see the 48 look like he almost had that 22 clear to 22 drives right back by him on the straightaway. There again, he's clear. Here comes the 22 back on the outside. Just so hard to be able to put that pass together. It takes many, many corners. Wow. See the 18 there? Yeah, Kyle Busch almost into the back. Marty, what you got on the 18? Well, Junior, remember earlier in the pre-race show, Kyle Busch said, with my success at Bristol, eight wins here more than anybody in the field. I've always worked the bottom tonight. He's having to work the top. So they've had to adjust on this race car, which gets tighter the longer that Kyle runs. In fact, earlier in the run, he said it was eight out of a 10 tight on the bottom of the racetrack, working the high group now. For his teammate, Martin Truex Jr., he's back in the 16th position, the Bass Pro Shop car with the Bass Pro Shop onboard camera tonight. Truex is saying he's having intermittent steering issues. We've heard this throughout the weekend here. We've also heard it earlier. He said it's just like the test at the Roval last year. And when it locks up, it locks up big. Junior, the other thing that Martin Truex Jr. said is that he had something in his eye in stage one. He tried to get it out under the last caution, couldn't do it, said it's really bothering him inside the race car. Add 500 laps at Bristol to all of that as Kyle Busch makes a pass around Kyle Larson. I can't imagine what something in your eye would feel like. Yeah, that, that is going to be a long night. We're hearing a lot of drivers talking about that, Marty. Just very difficult. You have power steering, and then all of a sudden, when it gets loaded up, it gets very hard to turn. Well, it's hard to turn right in the middle of the corner when you need the car to turn the most. 
the guys are going to have to be conditioned. The one advantage they have, it's not a very hot night. It, so temperatures are coming down. That's going to help the drivers, but you better have come into this race physically prepared. We continue to show the playoff bubble in the lower left corner of the screen, and you see right now in ninth, Battle Laney, they are still wow. on pit road as we continue to watch the battles on the racetrack. This 99 car of Suarez, he is loose. The back of that car, it keeps dancing around. He's using that high line to, to keep this position, but he is driving his, his hands off tonight. He is working hard. Harvick there battling, closing in on Bush for the lead. But to see what what options Harvick has as he closes in on this 17 car. Busher running the top of the racetrack. Harvick Har followed him up there. Yeah, Harvick runs a low entry, traditionally lower than the car in front of him. And then he runs a higher exit. So he's sort of offset both times. Entering and exiting the corner, there's a little offset, which we know this car really appreciates any kind of offset as far as downforce and grip. But how does he make the pass? That's the question. Harvick two wins already this season. They came back to back, but it was after a long drought. A that, lot longer than Har Harvick was hoping for. His line is unique to India. There's no one else that runs this line, and I know it's just a few feet different, but he enters a little bit lower, then he runs off the corner a lot higher. I do not know how he makes the pace, because it's, it's it kind of goes against the style that you would typically drive. You know, you never ch chop the entry or shallow up the entry and think that's going to make a fast lap. He makes it work around this unique racetrack. Time and time again, he makes it work. No matter the car, no matter the race, this guy figures it out. And how about RFK and the driver up front of Kevin Harvick? That is Chris Busher, and he's never led here before, but right now, Leading at Bristol, and maybe a little bit of smoke out of the 45. Yeah, that right side smoking. Absolutely, big smoke. That's a that's a power steering issue. Yeah, it says he can't turn it. So let's see on board. It's hard to tell from this angle. Obviously, you see the car is going by. He's he's having some sort of issue behind the wheel. So the, the difference in this one, guys, is that the other one they have power steering and then they lose it. It just gets hard to turn. He was never having it right there. Well, if he had smoke, that tells me that there has to be fluid somewhere. Either the tire's rubbing something, or oh, there's fluid. Look at the inside of that right front tire that just came off. Soaking wet. Guys, there's no reason to change tires. That's not going to fix this issue. You're going to have to open the hood and start looking at it. Let's look at this tire. Look at all that area right there. All that shine on that tire, all that right there, that is fluid coming out from, the, I'm guessing, the power steering system at some point. Yep. You either need to open the hood or push it behind the wall. Not Yep, behind the wall or mechanical issues are going to happen. Okay. He can't even move. Yeah. That's wild. So Bubba Wallace, last week's winner, now on pit road shaking his head. You can go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows, and it's happening right here at Bristol. laps into stage two. You'll notice if you look at the top ten, two JGR teammates running together. The 18 of Kyle Busch and the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Big week for Kyle Busch as he officially made the announcement of where he'll be racing in 2023. Joining the RCR camp, he'll be piloting that number eight Chevrolet next season, meaning that he will no longer be teammates with Denny Hamlin. Now, this may be a bigger deal than race fans realize. Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin have driven 516 races together as teammates, which is actually more than Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. Now, I will say in comparing the two duos, Kyle and Denny are still a bit behind in wins, 98 total to Jeff and Jimmy's 111.
Side by side for the lead. Harvick, who is in a must win situation, coming into this Bristol race, almost taking the lead away from Busher, but there, Busher comes down to the bottom of the racetrack and he holds on to that top spot. Both 2311 Toyotas, I believe, have retired from the race with power steering issues. The 45 and the 23 almost does the same lap. Things heating up here as you see the points. Again, the bottom four in points will be eliminated after tonight's race. Reddick, Harvick, Austin Dillon, and Cedric currently below that cutoff line. Still working on the car is Blaney. They've been working on it for quite a few laps. And so they are behind the wall right now trying to fix the 12. And Dave, how far are they? Sorry guys, I was getting out of the way of a wrecker that I was standing in front of, which was near the 12 car here. So safety issues abound here. They're far along on the right rear. They've gone to the right front as well. But remember how they got here to this point, and now they even still have a chance in the playoffs. Oh, we got a they car stacked at up stage points, and they're only falling down a little bit. Yeah, Harrison Burton up into the wall once the again. 43 is backwards on the front stretch as well. Oh, everybody is going by him. There's chaos everywhere all of a sudden. Eric Jones spins around. 50 laps. That was a long green flag run, the longest of the night. We ain't hit nothing. Oh, so that's oh. good to hear. But Harrison Burton's woes continue. Yeah, Harrison's got another right front flat. Take a look here. This is Eric Jones in the 43. You see him, and there was the contact made. Ah, so the 42 sees the 21. He tries to run the middle lane, and the 43 kind of just gets stacked up. And then these cars here. Avoiding? Yeah. Oh, man, the 21. So whatever it is that is causing the right front issues for some of these specific Fords. This is interesting that it went just a little bit longer. So it may be an air pressure issue, and they're just creeping up with that air pressure. Their teammates or the other Penske cars have maybe made bigger changes to just drastically avoid any problem. Jones still stopped on the racetrack. AMR safety team, yeah, right there, wondering, do you need a push? Asking for a push. There, right, he's got it started and rolling now. Todd Gibbs, he also, we're is having a power steering issue. Is this power steering or engine on this one? I, I, I know. He checked the level yet. See if there's any fluid left. Okay, check the level. That sounds right, like a up, uh, power steering issue to me. Kim. Confirmed when I checked with the team before they went behind the wall, they did in fact say it was a power steering issue. As they brought it behind the wall, Billy Scott told the team, find every extra part and piece you have for the steering. We likely are going to have to replace it all. So both of the winners of the last two races, the first playoff races, have had issues within the last 20 laps. Bubba Wallace and then Eric Jones. So now with this caution, the fifth of the night. And that was a save, uh, saving grace for Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick. Two cars getting ready to go a lap down right before that yellow comes out. It's been, that, it's been that kind of night for Austin Dillon and Reddick. Both of them have been running right really at the end of the lead lap. Now the field coming on to pit road once again. Marty. Kyle Busch told Ben Bayshore, we gained on it, but we're still way too tight. He said, I really have to work the brake to get the car to turn, especially on the bottom. An interesting radio from a few guys talking about how the bottom is going to be big. They're talking about a top caking up. Kim? And Chase Elliott right there, he said, I just don't have the versatility I need. I have not got comfortable with the pace and the balance yet. They're still working on that race car for Chase Elliott. Dave? Remember Joey Logano early took two tires, then four. They will come down. It looks like they'll take four here to keep Logano in the game. Dylan? Daniel Suarez at the bottom of your screen still trying to get that balance of that race car a little bit better for him. It was tight center that run, but still struggling with the bounce. Big chassis adjustment for him. Christopher Bell still pretty happy with his race car, just trying to get some track position back that they lost here in this second stage. Kyle Busch gains a spot. Christopher Bell loses one on pit road.
It's NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on USA. The Bass Pro Shops night race. And what an amazing crowd here. Almost 100,000 people in attendance watching this, the cutoff race for the round of 16. The mind blowing Ford F-150 Lightning is here and you could win one during NASCAR playoffs. Scan the QR code now or visit NASCAR.com slash Ford playoffs promo to get your chance to win the most innovative Ford F-150 ever. Nineteen of Martin Trex Jr. behind the wall, and you see Martin out of the car. Yeah, we're hearing power steering issues with what we heard over the radio. When he comes by right here, could you just look out the right front. You're going to see just a little wisp of smoke. See, it just kind of pops out of it right there, Marty. Boy, another Toyota with a power steering issue. Martin was kind of the first one to report it in stage one, said it was intermittently locking up. But when it locked up, it totally locked up. And now it's done. And you see Truex, who is not in the playoff hunt here, out of the race car. We'll see if we can get a word with Martin Truex Jr. here and ask him exactly what happened. Hey, Martin, let me get over here and grab him. Talking with Coach Gibbs. You said in stage one it was intermittent as it locked up, and when it locked up, it locked up big. Is it finally done? Yeah, it blew the seal out and pushed all the fluid out on the right front tire. So um, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, what what Harvick say? Crappy parts? Uh, yeah. If you if you're your teammate Kyle Busch, how worried would you be right now? Well, he's not going to worry. He's just going to drive until it stops working. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all you can do. It's another one. I, I don't know. He talks about another one. That's Bubba Wallace pulling behind us, trying to get back out on the racetrack, Dave. And so, Marty, how do you prevent another one? What is the 11 team of Denny Hamlin doing to try to prevent this? Listen. How's your steering bed, friend? Really bad under brake, especially up top. It, it feels like it spikes the load even worse than that, the front tire slide. I cannot use brake at all when I'm up top. The final word from Chris Gabehart, crew chief, was, I'm not sure what to tell you, but I think if you try not to load it, don't load it under steering, you may be able to save it. Dylan. And so now, guys, we've seen problems for Fords, problems for Toyotas. Here's the first problem for a Chevy. Alex Bowman reporting he's having power steering issues as well. It's starting to fade on him. The crew is down here game planning what to do if it goes away completely, and Alex has to come to pit road or go behind the wall. Just remember, this is the first time the next-gen car has been to the concrete version of Bristol. We have seen the dirt version. The concrete version has a ton of load, a ton of banking. The steering is an issue, has been an issue in this car earlier in the year. The teams all seem to have resolved that issue. Bristol creating new ones. Busher on the outside, Harvick on the inside, back underway. 45 laps to go in stage two. Saw Hamlin in the 11 down at the bottom of the racetrack there. Maybe a different line running for Denny Hamlin to avoid issues. It's interesting from his crew chief talking about trying not to load the steering. I just don't know how you do that, Steve. I don't know as a driver. <laughs> I mean, you got to turn the car. The only way to not load it more is to just enter the corner slower. I just don't know how you can not load the steering. Yeah, I wonder. Jeff, Jeff, he did tell him to back up the corner a little bit, too. Would that be one way to not load it? it, it well, yes, but once you go to the throttle, you know, to, to get your speed back up, now you're loaded in the middle of the corner where the most load is. So I just don't know how you prevent it. Well, listen, physics are physics. If you're running the same speed through the middle of the corner as everyone else, I, I think the load is, we're talking really close to the same. I, there could be some variation between running the bottom and the top. That would be the only thing that I can go. think of is, hey, man, is the bottom, is the bottom harder, is it harder to turn on the bottom of the racetrack? It seemed to work the power steering pump or, or the rack harder running the top. Uh, only the drivers would really know that. A great race in here. The Toyotas have, have blown, they're saying they're blowing, the, Martin said he blew the seals out of the unit. So that is, that is something you're not going to fix. And yeah, that's a great move by Kyle Busch. Fred Needle between his teammate and his 31 car. Justin Haley on the outside in that leaf filter. Chevrolet gives the spot away to Kyle Busch. And Dale on the left, look at the big variety, right? 116 laps from the guys up front, a few with 80, and then a bunch of guys with 12 laps. So 
You know, everybody with a different opinion, but this old tires is still holding on fine near the front. Yeah, I was sleeping on the whole night. <laughs> Get a set that works. <laughs> Your favorite set of tires. All right, Busher's up front. Harvick running in that second position. Hamlin, Custer, and Chastain top five. Then it's Larson, Kyle Busch, Bell, Haley, Bowman, and Keselowski. Those two fighting for positions. How about uh, Roush Fenway tonight? You saw how well Keselowski ran early. Now Busher leading the race. I'm going to give a tip of the hat to Ford. I was very vocal that I didn't think they had what they needed the big track, but they played all but one lap tonight, Rick. So. Ford is showing up in the playoffs and showing up here at the Coliseum. Yeah, Christopher Bell, the only non-Ford to lead a lap today, and that's only been one lap. Marty. Boy, Rick, imagine being Kyle Busch. Came in below the cut line, the two-time champ right now above the cut line. But, Jeff, I thought Martin Truex Jr. made a fantastic point. Why worry about what could happen with a power steering? Kyle's going to go drive as hard as he can, gets another spot from his teammate Christopher Bell, now plus 21 above the cut line. So I think that's the mentality on the 18 team right now. They haven't said a word about their teammates' power steering issues. I think Kyle is simply focused forward. I think he has to be. I think that's the right approach. If there was something that we feel like there was something major the driver could do to help this problem, then yes, go do it. But we just don't see it from here. We'll see who's on the move with power moves brought to you by propane. Busher 19 spots up since the start of this race. Kyle Busch has made up 13 positions. Chase Elliott 12. And Busher up front leading this one. Has a four tenth of a second lead over Harvick who runs right up against the wall. And they are both running different lines. Look at Harvick here running the top of the racetrack three and four the lap before he's on the bottom of the racetrack. Back to the top Christopher to the bottom. This racetrack is providing these drivers a lot of options. You know Kevin Harvick. You know, we didn't think he could point himself in tonight, but if these troubles continue, can enough guys have trouble where he might not have to win this race? He's got two guys still in front of him before that cut line in Reddick and Austin Dillon, but he's only 11 points, now 10 points back. But again, a win cures everything, and he's running second. So if he gets up there, wins the race, he advances into the next round. There's the gap between one and two. I mean, lap times are just so even. And dirty air is really frustrating this four car. 18 laps into this run, and amazingly, look at this racetrack. You can barely see another car in front of the race leader, Chris Busher. Dylan. So, Junior, to your point about Kevin Harvick and dirty air, the opposite is true for Chris Busher. He said they felt like they've been really bad until they got to the front of this field. Now he's led 96 laps and nobody can pass him. So on a track as small as this is, clean air really does matter, doesn't it? It can affect how your car drives and uh, really make the difference, Marty. Dylan, I thought Jeff Burton brought up an outstanding point a moment ago. And when I talked to Rodney Childers this afternoon, he told me, I think there is a points path for us to make it through the next round because I think the biggest key tonight is going to be surviving. It's going to be attrition. And he was exactly right. And keep this in mind. As you look at the left-hand side of your screen, Kevin Harvick, minus 11 right now. But he could get these stage points right here, Rick. Could be 9 or 10, and that could put him close to the cut line. Yeah, huge for Harvick if he's able to finish with either 9 or 10 points here in stage two. Now down to 23 laps, 22 to go in this stage. Man, it's fun to watch him try to move his throttle, try to figure out something to find an advantage. When he gets closer to the 17, he kind of gets frustrated with the dirty air and he has to change what he's doing. What a night for RFK as Busher out in front. This is the most laps he has ever led in a race out front here at Bristol.
coming now. I'm coming in. More trouble for playoff drivers at Bristol Motor Speedway. You see the damaged car of Denny Hamlin. Right front definitely down. Contact with the wall. Denny's now forced to bring this Toyota to pit road. Take a look at what happened. Yeah, I think it's just a right front tire from what we heard on the radio. Yeah, he goes up the hill. Let's look at the oh, contact. Wow. Nice right. job. Yeah. Whether it was in control or a little bit of luck, a little bit of bow. Oh, this will show us everything. Yeah, Steve, most right fronts we've seen guys are running the top. Many on the bottom. You hear it. You hear it tire. But it happened slowly. Yeah. It, it, it didn't, you know, it didn't go boom. It heard it, you heard it going, da, 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 da. you heard it unraveling, yeah. and that's why he didn't hit hard. So a little different. This tire right here where you mentioned 40, 45 laps of the Fords, 113 green on the Toyota. So then unraveling, is it, I know it is a right front tire still going flat, but is it, a different, different. cause, yeah. right? Like, yeah. results the same, cause could be yeah. different. Yeah, that sounded like that tire unwound. It's a great night to be sitting up here in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think about what's going through Denny's head, probably Kyle Busch's head. He has Toyota teammates that are behind the wall and out of this race already with a power steering issue. Now he has a right front tire go down. Well, not only that, but with 14 laps to go in the stage, pit road's open. So what do you do right here? Yeah, I mean, I pit. I pit because the end of the race is 264. You can make it a one stop from here. I pit here and I sacrifice the stage points to stay out under the stage. That would be my move. Unless I need to make it onto the next round. Marty. And Steve, that's the move Rodney Childers makes. And they countered that with Ross Chastain's team, who was coming. And then they saw the four pit and said, hey, we want the stage points here. Harvard's saying his car is just a little bit too tight. Four going stage points here in stage two, Kim. And right there, the five car of Kyle Larson. They felt good where they were in points. So strategy call by Cliff Daniels. Kyle just reporting that he's tight to fire off. Not enough turn loading into one on the shorter run. And just very hard to clear people was his main point, Dave. 22 of Joey Logano hits pit road again. This will be another air pressure adjustment. Slight adjustment this time for Joey. He'll get four tires. Nope, they're going to go as a chassis adjustment as well. Tyler Reddick is on pit road as well, working his way from the back. They were just terrible in traffic there in the back. We'll see if they do this on this set of tires. Interesting strategy there for that pit stop. The guy who put the left front tire on was also the Jackman. Yeah, the tire carrier won, and Jackman basically have a little bit of the similar duties right to left. It's it's a real ballet for sure. And that's some of the reason why we see some left sides leave before they get tight because your job changes. So you're not like confirming one job gets done. You move to the jack and, and it's all just a timing thing. And if the timing's wrong, uh, the wheel doesn't get tight. It's going to be a sprint to the finish of stage two under 13 to go. All right, Steve, so many things happening tonight uh, under the hood and really Let's take the body of your car away and look a little bit closer and explain to us what's happening. Yeah, let's go to our Toyota virtual car right here. Let's just take a conversation about steering. We've seen some steering issues. We've seen some right front tires. So as we kind of come around, we're going to talk about really both of them. First, let's talk steering. So in this area right here, this is the whole steering system right there. So it's a hydraulic system. You see there's a line there. There's a line that runs down. There's a pump and a reservoir. And what happens is, as this system fails, it usually fails in this area right here. That's where that seal is that uh, Truex is talking about, in this area right here. When this system fails, basically it becomes a hydraulic issue and it leaks the fluid out. This has to have fluid for it to work. When we talk about some of the right front failures, really there's some adjustment. You see right here is the A-arm, right? That's kind of what you use to set the camber. So. It doesn't look as simple as the old car because it isn't. This isn't something you're gonna open the hood and just take some shims in and out of this thing. So two issues, uh, well, there you go. You wanna know what one looks like in real life. That is what a steering rack looks like going in. And you see just how difficult on my beautiful virtual world, you just take all those other parts out of the way and you yeah. can see it. You just see how difficult it is. The 19 on the other side, I would, um, I would probably vote for this as well. If I didn't make the playoffs and weren't having a good year and have a power steering issue, I'd be beating traffic. And Steve, the reason I believe that they're doing the 45 is because they're still in a chase for the championship as far as the owner's championship goes. Now, again, with the win last week, they advanced to the next round already. But And that's kind of why I'm wondering yeah, why they're... Why are they going to do yeah, it? Yeah, they're advanced. I, you know, maybe, pr listen, practice and, and get Bubba back out. I, I mean, I understand. It'll be 10 laps to go in stage two. 
Christopher Busher in the gas first. Briscoe on the inside of the 14. That's Christopher Bell up front. They used to be to clear, but now there's two Christophers. <laughs> it's a whole thing. <laughs> See the 9 and the 18. Both those drivers almost got together on turn four. Chase has kind of struggled tonight back in the pack. Had a hard time finding any track position. Finally has it. Be interesting to see if this night car has any pace for these leaders. More contact right there with him and Kyle. You see right here, Kyle Busch just trying to run that bottom. Chase Elliott on the top. Look how much momentum Chase can carry on the exit of the corners. Looking back at the Xfinity onboard of Chase Elliott. Down to the bottom of the racetrack, you see Kyle Busch going up high. Playoff bubble, seven to go in stage two. Stage points awarded. Austin Dillon below the line, Reddick below the line, Cindric and Harvick all below the cutoff line. Well, Christopher Bell and this team sitting there leading this race. They have brought their best to the playoffs. When the playoffs started, they stepped up. Six to go in the stage. So Steve walk us through the decision for Rodney Childers to give up what looked like nine stage points there. It would have taken Kevin Harvick very close to the cut line. They restarted 15th, now in 12th. Not sure he's going to get any stage points here in stage two. Well, the issue was when he was minus 11, that was already figuring in that finish of the stage. So even running second, he was still double digits out. Right. So they are calling this race to win. So for the four car pitting now, staying out at the end of the stage, that is a winning strategy to try to cycle to the front. Um, everyone else, you know, who came in questionable on points, or even if you were somewhat safe, you can lock it up right now and not have to worry about the second half. Yeah, even with all the issues that we have seen out of these playoff drivers, Kevin Harvick still in a very deep hole as pit road is closed now, under two laps to go in stage two. Briscoe trying to work his way around Elliott. But it's still Christopher Bell out front. Ross Chastain has cleared Briscoe, and so he is up to second. And Christopher Bell is going to do it. He wins stage two. That's four Cup Series stage wins all the last eight races of this season. The crazy night continues, and we're just halfway of this night race. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Bristol, the Bass Pro Shops night race. Two stages complete here from Bristol Motor Speedway, and we have already seen the chaos that breeds here on this famous short track. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch a race here from Bristol, I took you out on the high banks earlier this afternoon to give you a feel for what this place is like. The final stage in front of us. You see the lights in the background there of the stands here at Bristol. It is an amazing event. 
as the fans taking part in this night race as you see the cars working their way onto pit road now here at the end of stage two Marty. 14 key stage points for Kyle Busch, and he's pitted right behind Ross Chastain. He said, I don't have the security to throw it into the corner like I would like it freed up that run. Chastain right in front of him said the rubber buildup on the top of the track is really hurting us. I cannot be any looser than I was on that run, Kim. Chase Briscoe on the bottom of the screen. Stage points accrued in both stages. Goal accomplished. He said the steering's killing me. Dead center of the corner feels like at hydroplanes. Just really tight. They made a chassis adjustment. Four tires, Snoko fuel, Dave. Three stage points for Austin. Dylan, he's now out by just one as they run. Same adjustment direction. His steering is getting a little catchy. Dylan. Alex Bowman will pit. He said he didn't have a great feel for what the car was doing because he's battling not only a steering issue, but a brake shake issue. They'll pit here and take four tires and fuel as well for Bowman. Rick, if steering was your drinking word, you're not going to make the second <laughs> half. I'm just letting you know. It's going to be a long night. Top three all holding position as they come off of pit road. Experiencing a race at Bristol is unlike anything else on the NASCAR circuit. If you haven't had the opportunity to come to the last great Coliseum, I took a short walk out of the high banks earlier today to give you some insight about what this place is like. They call Bristol Motor Speedway the last great Coliseum. And just look at this place, 360 degree stadium seating. Watching a race here, there is truly nothing like it. But the racing here is even more unique. A half mile short track, 40 feet wide, and the progressive banking in the corners ranges from 26 degrees to 28 degrees. That means that when these drivers are running the high line, they're almost two stories above race fans that are watching from in the infield. When it comes to short track racing, there is truly nothing like it here at Bristol. And when you ask the drivers how to describe this place, they always reference the old phrase. It's like flying fighter jets in a gymnasium. The last great Coliseum, the world's fastest half mile, whatever you want to call this place, there is no doubt that it is exciting. And with 244 laps to go in this race, I can guarantee we are in for a show. Great crowd on hand. Proud sponsor of the Great American Night Race, Johnny Morris's Bass Pro Shops is celebrating 50 years of serving those who love the great outdoors. Today it has grown to be known as North America's premier outdoor company and worldwide leader in conservation. Congratulations to Johnny and the team at Bass Pro Shops on 50 years. And I mentioned that light show by the fans being a part of it. Johnny Morris is a big NASCAR fan as well. Not only a big supporter of this race, uh, Truex, Austin Dillon, Noah Gregson, multiple cars in the field, but you just always see him at all the races. I mean, this is a man that runs a huge company. I'm sure he has a lot of other things he could be doing and spending his time here at NASCAR races. Very much appreciated. A time great today. friend of Richard Childress, by the way. Oh yeah, I saw him today walking across the racetrack over in turn three, and he was strutting across the racetrack. He was happy to be here. How could you not be? Right now, he's in the radio booth next to us. I'm waving right at him. Oh, there man. you go. There he goes. That man is making his round. Marty. 14 stage points for Kyle Busch so far tonight. Could be massive in his hope to advance to round two. Ben Bayshore gave him an update. Listen. As we run, we are uh, five points above the cut line. The 14 and the 8 are tied for uh, 12 and 13. So they came in below the cut line. Steve, a lot of nerves here. Ben Bayshore hoping the power steering holds out. But right now, Kyle Busch would advance with where he is. And as quickly as those are worried about points, there are four more that are locked in that join Bell. William Byron, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, and Alex Bowman. They will be 
in the round of 12. Yeah. What a oh, yep. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, man, what a relief for a couple of those guys. Bowman experiencing some issues. <laughs> Denny's got to be a little nervous about what he sees all his teammates going through. You and I were thinking the same yeah. thing. <laughs> I'd be nervous about that four car. As he's sitting there in third, he last pit on lap 237. Chris Brubell, Chase Elliott coming back to the green flag as stage three underway. This is going to be a big challenge both on the racetrack and on pit road. How you consume this last 240 laps when you pit. It's easy to say tires don't have a whole lot of value, but now the field knows it. How are you going to play your chess pieces differently? William Byron to the bottom of the racetrack here. His teammate Kyle Larson running the high side. Can't really make the exit work off of turn four. Haven't seen William up here much. We'll be paying attention to his pace here now that he has some clean air on this 24. Seems that everybody seems to get better when they get in that top two, top three position. Big run on the five as he's going to go to the outside trying to get by William Byron. Right on the corner of your screen, you saw the 12 car Ryan Blaney pulling back out on the racetrack to rejoin the field. Blaney scored 148 laps down. Yeah, so with 238 left to go, if somebody had a wreck right now, he could catch him. Plus, with Wallace Gibbs and Trex out, I believe those points are available. Larson well. to the outside here. This is second cool. place. That second spot as Byron continuing to run the bottom of the racetrack, and Larson on the outside clears him for second. Williams going to go to the top, try to find that speed the five car has up there. Now here comes his teammate, Chase Elliott, to the inside. Chase. Working that Hooters Chevrolet on the bottom of the racetrack in turn three and four. Great shot off the nose. Xfinity camera giving us this great shot from Chase's car down in the corner. Watching both his teammates work two different lines around this racetrack. Pretty cool seeing Chase Elliott just wrap that line. Old school Bristol, he said as a kid, this was the track that made him want to be a race car driver. Well, that's the line that he watched. That's what he watched his dad do. That's how he used to win races here. And he's trying to make this pass. Unsuccessful so far, and it's allowing this four car harder to close in. Again, he's going to have to be defensive. He ju jumps up in that outside line to try to take away any kind of momentum from the four car, but eventually, Harvick's going to try to get on that right side. Elliott's going to defend that by going to the top. Now, remember, the four and the nine a year ago oh. got into each other. Harvick in a must win situation. He's going to do anything he can to advance into the round of 12. Harvey gets the position. Now he's going to go to the bottom of the racetrack, turn three and four. He's trying to catch this 24 car here. There was the contact between the two a year ago. And issues for the 18. He's into the wall. Kyle Busch below the cut line to start right, the race. He was above the cut line. All right, you're good down. And that looks like that's an engine. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, that's out of both the headers right there. So. That does not look like, oh man, is that water I see pouring out? Four That's, tires, four tires, oh. Four tires, there's no, dude. four tires, your man is not coming to see you and you hear the crowd. You either love them or you hate them. You see the fans with the M&M's gear, the 18. There's a lot of rowdy fans out there, but this is not what they wanted to see out of Kyle Busch. Out of the race car, out of the race. And more than likely, he's going to be out of the playoffs. Remember, guys, he had an engine failure at Darlington. Yeah. It's a race race to go. Like he could win, right? Yes. And it's just failure. Oh, yeah, you oh, see wow. the. We call that Yoohoo. When the water and oil mix, that's, that's a major internal failure on this engine. Smoke rolling out. Of the 18, and the night is over for Kyle Busch, an eight-time winner here at Bristol. Guys, I know you can have a failure anywhere, but without shifting, and, and I haven't seen a lot of shifting, I can't confirm whether they are or aren't, Jeff. Keep coming. This just All isn't clear. a track you would expect to see an engine failure. Right? The, the cycles on the engine aren't really awful here. Um, Kyle Busch never has been eliminated from this round ever in his career a two-time champion and now out of the playoffs and think about the week think about the week that Kyle Busch has had all summer contract 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 big announcement down at the Hall of Fame with Richard Childress 
I'm going to RCR next year. Got that off his shoulders. Finally could put his foot forward and focus on this year in the playoffs. And now a second engine in this round. I agree with you will perhaps end the the 18's chances of moving forward. You would think so, but you just this is 2022. Know. Yeah. And, and look That's at all true. the failures already this year, this this race. I mean, this has been a race of attrition, and why is it going to get any better? 228 laps to go. Why, why are all of a sudden cars going to stop braking? So, yes, it does not look good for Kyle Busch at all, but who knows what can happen here. Hey, that that's a small little thing right there, right? So it's Marty doing a great job chasing him down. He he is very focused, but when he saw, you know, James Small, I know that sounds silly, but but that's someone you know you trust. It's a teammate, right? Whatever information he needed to give or whatever. That just shows that while he is frustrated at the moment, I know that seems small, but as a crew chief that used to chase down a teammate asking information or whatever, uh, the fact that he would stop and talk tells me he's still very plugged into Gibbs right here and he wants to have a good finish to the year. The 18 behind the wall. Hopefully we can talk with Kyle Busch when we return, but it's Bell that's out front here at Bristol. Change the past one leap at a time. Don't miss the premiere of Quantum Leap. That's Monday at 10, 9 Central on NBC and streaming next day on Peacock. I'm sure Kyle Busch would love to be able to change the past as the engine expires for him and potentially he could be out of the playoffs. So we said potentially in the under break, we kind of talked about it. Dale Jr., you guys brought up a great point over there. Kyle Busch is currently out in fifth, but look who's above him. Reddick and Briscoe, even Suarez. Suarez on the racetrack running 13th. He could lose 11 points. Briscoe having a decent run, but he's a 17th. He can lose nine points, and Reddick only plus five could lose as well. So it is definitely not over for the 18. The other three cars in front of him have to finish off these nights. Also, back up. one thing is, one thing is, one thing is, hurt him is Blaney's back on track, so he will probably pass Kyle Busch. Yeah, with 224 laps to go, if he's able to finish all of the laps, he's only 150. Oh, man, yeah, what a back stretch. What a huge crash. Multiple cars wanting it up in turn three. The 99's in it, guys. Suarez, we a part talked, of it. Yeah, we just talked about that. The 48 advanced, and he's going to feel good about it because his car is smoking yeah, come, come on, come through the come hood. On. The 99 over here. has look a at, flat tire. Wait, look guys. at the bubble okay. now. The eight's on pit road. Just those as position quickly, changes there. Yep, as quickly as that happened. Somebody got turned about halfway down the back stretch, guys. Who was the first one? Oh, Suarez is loose. All night he's been loose. Corrects it. Gets just gets behind on the steering. Gets into the side of Stenhouse. Stenhouse. Just nothing he could do. Todd Gillen coming into it. The first go barely cleared it. Yeah. yeah, Rick. Wow. Austin Dillon there as well in the three. The one thing I'll say though is we've seen these cars get beat up. They take a lot of hits, and as long as you can keep that toe link straight, except for the damage to the right front there on the eight. Yeah, Reddick, uh, right front damage. We'll see how bad that is. Okay. Just body 
cars many. I'll start only. Just a 38. Getting low, getting low, stay in it, stay in it, going back down, you're good. I give Daniel a lot of credit for hanging on to that thing as long as he did, because he's had his hands full all night. Check up, check up, low, 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 in the middle, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Look this at the is, damage here to the eight. This is Redick. Yeah, the body damage is certainly not going to help him, but the biggest concern is the suspension damage. What's hurt? That tire is, okay, I couldn't tell if it was yeah. still tight or not on. All right, so the tow link's kind of right there. It looks like it's in one piece. Uh, best I can tell. He's got a couple wrenches out. Where's he going to go to work here? That's oh, the tow link he just grabbed. It's broken. Oh, look at the three car. The left front is awesome. Dylan. All right, look, we got the kit out, guys. Look at this right here. We got a little tool kit. We practiced this at the shop. We have talked about this. It looks like we have a, I can't tell. Yeah, that's a whole upper controlometer piece of foam. This is. We talked about this in the production meeting. Who is going to practice more than just pit stops? We're getting out ready to there see. There we can go, man. We got to get it out there. There's RC. We yep. just got to get it out there. These mechanics know it. That's an entire upper control arm assembly. Ten Going minutes lower. to do this, Steve, right? Yeah, NASCAR made the adjustment in the playoffs. The teams requested, and I think this was a good adjustment. The, the idea of the damaged vehicle was to not eliminate cars that could return. So they extended from six to ten minutes because this car just seems to take a little more time, Dave. Richard Childress on the radio, as you heard, both of his cars involved in that, as Austin Dillon described it. Sorry, guys, that all happened in a big old hurry, and yes, it did. Damage to both of these cars. Now, we'll see what they can do. You look at the, on the left, you see the playoffs as they run, both Dillon and Reddick just a little bit below, but we also saw how long Blaney spent fixing his car earlier. They'll try to get this done in 10 minutes. Steve, you pointed it out earlier. Go get to race pace again, and then the clock is no longer an issue. They can work on it the rest of the night when they want to. Yeah, but race pace, unfortunately, here is 17.53 seconds. That's about a second and a half, a little under two seconds faster than you run on new tires. I've never run a lap at Bristol, but guys, I can't imagine 17 seconds is easy to accomplish with something broken on your race car. We have to at least get the car off the racetrack and the tires pointed in the right direction. There's RC looking on both of the RCR cars on pit road. Like worst case scenario, a year ago they battled and couldn't seem to get two in. This year they got both of them in. And now here they are both below the cut line. Austin Dillon and Reddick continue to fall. Kyle Busch, we know he's not moving. He's blown up. Yeah. Plus four, currently in 12th. Okay. We still have 219 laps to go, but playoff driver issues already. And it started early. Austin Sinder with some tire issues. A couple more Fords are going to have problems. Thought this was going to be the theme of the night. Boy, were we wrong. Denny Hamlin, a little bit later, he had a right front tire go down. Kyle Busch, smoke came out of the pipe. Never good. Blown engine looked like for him. And then a huge wreck down the back straightaway with multiple playoff drivers involved. One thing we, we didn't cover there that, that has been another issue throughout the night is power steering. A lot of guys having power steering issues. It's put a couple cars behind the wall. Eric Amarola, a guy that early in the race was the pole sitter. He's run really well. He's been having power steering issues as well. You see this eight car. You mentioned Richard Childress. We just showed him on top of that building. The thing that made Richard Childress, that guy right there with your dad, what they did so much better than everybody else has run all the laps. That's what he believes in. So he he knows he had these teams prepared in case of something, in case something happens, have your stuff ready. We gotta get this stuff fixed. That's what has made him successful. And I promise you, he pushes everyone in that company to make sure they're prepared for every situation. And we have seen about every situation here at Bristol tonight. This one, a big rack happening in turn three, wadding up cars and a lot of playoff drivers.
Caution is out once again here from Bristol. And as they stand in those top 10, the 10th position, the 22 of Joey Logano. Now, Joey's a winner here at Bristol on the dirt, but in talking to him a few weeks ago, he told me that win on the dirt does nothing for confidence heading into tonight's competition. When you go to the track for the first time with this car, it's like, okay, I'll rewatch last year's race. What am I really learning from this? Like, sure. is it going to be like this at all? Not really. No, we've, we've learned all year long. It's nothing like it used to be. Um, you actually have to unlearn a lot of things that we were used to. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say you're completely winging it, but you are to a certain extent. Like, you can't say that other short tracks are like Bristol. You can't say dirt Bristol is close to concrete Bristol is completely different. Despite that lack of confidence heading into tonight, Joey sits well above the cut line with 215 laps to go in the 10th place position. Um, I just, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I'm flabbergasted. Um, I just feel so bad for my guys. I mean, they don't, they don't deserve to, to be in this spot. You know, they work too hard. We're too good of a group to be this low down on the bottom and um, and fighting for our lives just to make it through. But two engine failures in three weeks, that'll do it to you. So, um, you know, really feel bad for all of Rowdy Nation, everybody at M&Ms. It's just interstate batteries, Rowdy Energy, all the all the partners that, uh, that get us going every week. I mean, man, this is not our normal. As we go green here, Kyle, will you hang around to see if you do make it to round two here? If I get done with my media obligations and NASCAR releases me, I'm going to the house. I got kids at home. All right, we're back green here at Bristol, but right now above the cut line, plus six. We'll have to see how this race plays out. And it's been a crazy night, Rick. Who knows? Yeah, it has changed quickly. As we see still Christopher Bell out front, Larson running second, Kozlowski, Byron, and Harvick all in the top five. Again, Harvick in a position, if he wants to advance, he's going to have to win this race. Tom well, Larson I think crazier right things, here. crazier things have happened though. So maybe he doesn't have to win this race to advance. Bottom now. right on board with Tyler Reddick. Now it's all about that magic minimum speed. You only get three laps to do it. So you're gonna have to get a good run and have a good plan. Great battle at the top for the lead. Tyler Reddick team doing a nice job putting some new suspension on. He's gonna take three shots at it. We need to see a 17 second lap. No, we see minimum speed. Oh, almost in the wall right there. Yeah. He ain't working too good. And here's the problem. You only get three shots, three laps, three consecutive laps, and you don't make it, your day's over. Yeah, and he got a lot of debris on his tires up there in, against the wall. That's not good enough. He used up nine minutes of that clock. Kim. And Alex Bowman out of the race. The good news is you advance to the next round. What happened out there, though? Yeah, so we lost power steering the beginning of stage two. And we stayed out there to get stage points and kind of topped our way through it and then um, restarted in the back because we stayed out so long. And they all crashed in front of me, nowhere to go. So, bummer, we had a really fast Ally Camaro, capable of running in the top five all day. But it uh, sucks when you lose power steering. It's hard to overcome that at a place like Bristol. And uh, I think we still would have ended up okay. Just did the safe thing to stay out for stage points. And uh, at least we're locked in the next round. Steve, the eight, looks like he made minimum speed. He did. So he's coming back on pit road now to continue some more repairs because the damaged vehicle clock, clock no longer exists. Minimum speed completely throws it out the window. Unfortunately for his teammate, the three of Austin Dillon, he sits on pit road, hood still up, under one minute. You can see the little bit of urgency right here, trying to get this three car. Nope, you saw right there that head shake taking it behind pit wall. The three cars night is going to be done. It ended up being a pass through penalty for the eight. Uh, they left equipment at the box. So he was serving that penalty as he comes back out on the track now. Yeah, and now for the eight. I mean, we're looking at him, right? He's, uh, let's see, 13 laps down. It's all about attrition. He's hoping some other cars will have some issue. You look on the left side, he's five points behind Kyle Busch. Kyle can't really move. Maybe one spot to Blaney, as, as Jeff pointed out, uh, for Reddick. He can't really catch anyone. He's ahead of everyone who's out of the race. He needs more attrition. Kyle Busch right now scored in 32nd. And again, it so, was a big 
first and second stage for Kyle Busch. He gained 14 points, stage points. That was huge for him. Reddick only three. Interesting to know, Bubba Wallace is on the racetrack, 90 laps down. He, too, could pass Kyle Busch as well. You know, that's a good point. I, I'll be running down there, be like, hey, man, you sure you want to keep running? You're into the next round. You can just come on. I'll buy you lunch. Right along on the helmet of Bubba Wallace, that Money Lion helmet cam. Denny Hamlin on the outside of Ross Chastain. That has been an eventful season already for these two drivers. We knew Bristol was going to be crazy. It is not disappointed. We still have 199 to go. Hamlin going by Chastain. Hamlin running in the 12th spot. Chastain 13th. Chase Briscoe in 14th. Right behind these guys is Justin Haley having a great run in 15th in that 31 car. He's right on the inside here of the 14 of Briscoe. Justin's kind of turned it on the last several weeks. Starting to improve this team. This team getting better each week. Start, you know, you run around in the back side of the top 20 and then you start trying to get a little better. 15th, maybe the top 10 here and there. You mentioned Justin Haley, a best of 36th here in the Cup Series. We want to take a look at the Toyota driver updates. Bell up front. Then you look a little bit further back. The 11 of Denny Hamlet is 12th. Kyle Busch out of the race in 32nd. Bubba Wallace, he's back on track, but scored 33rd. And Martin Truex Jr. also out of the race in 34th. But it's Kind of the shining star right now for Toyota in Christopher Bell. Steve, you had him as your guy. You thought he might be the one that could get to victory lane here tonight. I liked his points position. I liked his enthusiasm. I mean, he, he the way he talks about this place with such reverence, like, it is special to him. And I think, you know, in today's day and age of just, you know, another race, another race, another race, it was it's great to see kind of that sparkle when he talks about Bristol. I think that helps Dale right in these closing laps. And you got a deep dig deep and find a little extra knowing you love the track you're driving on I think helps a guy like Christopher Bell Dylan how about that 20 car yeah he loves running here too and I think it's fun to watch him as the leader move around on the racetrack you know he's not staying complacent he hasn't just been running the bottom long in laps he's been moving around because he can have he has a pretty good feel of What's slow on the racetrack? What lines are maybe working a little bit faster without being told? Adam Stevens, his crew chief, said that's one thing he does really well. And we don't have to tell him to move up. He'll just move up by himself if he feels like he needs to move up. So his dirt racing background, that constant searching notion and, and thought process certainly helps him at a place like this and is helping him stay in front of Larson now. Larson, nine tenths of a second back. Kislowski. Really good run for Brad Kozlowski today. 1.3 seconds behind Bell. Then it's Byron and Harvick. So we mentioned Harvick in a very tough position right now for the points standings. He is 16, 19 below the cutoff line. Right along with him. A lot of racing still to go. 188 laps remain here. Harvick's put himself in a good position, just two points behind, or excuse me, two seconds behind. Back to the strategy, Steve. A lot of these guys got to be thinking we're getting close to being inside the window. Do you, you know, you get that caution, 150 laps to go. You're coming to pit road, putting on that last set of tires and telling your driver you're probably not coming back. Yeah, you, we figure they can run 160 on fuel green, 186 right now. I mean, if you get a yellow around now, you might be thinking, you're going to get a ton of yellows, or you can kind of connect the dots. Uh, the other side of that, though, just to keep in mind, Christopher Bell, he has 116 laps on this current run. There's a bunch of yellows in there, but he is, you know, it sounds like a lot of laps, probably 50 laps away from needing fuel. That, uh, you know, at 15 seconds, that is not good for your anxiety if you only have 15 <laughs> left. And he is, him and Byron are the two Another car that's that are in that situation. Another car yeah. pulled back onto the racetrack. Ty Gibbs, 132 laps down, back out on the racetrack making laps in the number 23 Toyota. 
And there are enough laps that he could get by Kyle Busch as well. So Bell up front. Larson running second here at Bristol. Remaining here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Take a look at those RFK cars. Both of them running in the top 10 right now. Brad Keselowski in his first year in the sixth car, currently in the third position, does not have a win yet this season, but is on his way to his best finish this year. And Chris Busher in the 17, currently running seventh. That team has been very vocal this season about keeping all eyes on Busher, using that 17 car as a benchmark when it comes to progress this season. And what Busher has done has been nothing short of impressive. If he could hold on to another top 10 finish here, that would only add to his impressive 2022 resume. Two top fives at short tracks, four top tens on short tracks. And he won the duel at Daytona earlier this season with one win and one pole so far in his Cup Series career. NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Bristol the Bass Pro Shops night race looking down on this incredible facility aerial coverage brought to you by Geico nearly a hundred thousand fans right here in Bristol and think about this East Tennessee you've got Knoxville about two hours from here and the football team there generates over a hundred thousand people over two hundred thousand sports fans two hours apart enjoying sports on this Saturday. This is an incredible battle right here. Wow. Three wide for position. Chase Elliott, his teammate, William Byron. Harvick on the bottom. Busher climbing, climbing into this as well. All of this is being created by that slow car up front. Tyler Reddick on the high side. These, these two fighting for position up here. Tyler's got an, you know, Tyler's got the issue with the damage. The tens got a little power steering issue. All these guys just trying. There's nowhere to go. You know, they're not doing anything wrong. They just can't. There's nowhere for them to go to get out of the way. You can't slow down and let everybody go, right? You're gonna have cars coming time and time again to try to get by you and lap you. So you just get up the top of the racetrack and go as hard as you can. Into the two fighting for position, Harvick and Busher. But as you look at the bubble. How frustrating would it be if you're Reddick or Sendrick, you're five points behind a guy who's not even in the race anymore? Well, you're hoping for some attrition. Yeah. I I mean, I, when I look up there, I think the one that's really in, in a little bit of nerves is Daniel Suarez, because he's plus six running 23rd. But if he was to fall out of this race, he could lose six points. And he's a couple laps down, and he's had some damage from this accident. So I don't know how severe the damage is, but he is just hoping to have a clean finish. And now if Harvick somehow got up there and won the race, then he eliminates Kyle Busch. That's right. Moves the whole cut line a spot. Harvick closing in on Busher. Busher had to check up there with Suarez. 
getting out of the gas just in front of him. Dave. Rick, it was a spectacular win at Daytona that put Austin Dillon into the playoffs. A spectacular crash took you out here. What did you see? Yeah, you know, I think we were doing our job there. We had a pretty good Bass Pro Shop Chevy, and I haven't seen the replay, but I heard Daniel just wrecked it, got wrecked the 47 and caused a big one. So part of it, um, wish we would have been a little better spot. Just broke the suspension on the left run. Uh, we had gotten stage points, and really, we had a pretty good race car, so feeling pretty good about it. We just needed to miss that one. Got a tough first round with a decent race car before all that. Yeah, it was that was the best car we brought. You know, we put ourselves in a bind after the first two races and brought something that we could race with today and, and felt good about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's over probably for us. So, uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity. We'll just go try and win a race for the end of the year. Austin Dillon out of the race and presumably out of the playoffs, guys. Yeah, you see him nine points down and no positions really to gain. We talk about Austin Cindric and being five laps down, being five points out of the playoffs. He's going to be able to pick up one position here. McLeod in 24th is also on the same lap as him. So he'll be running him down. He's about a straightaway behind McLeod, so that'll be one spot for him. His pot spotter, crew chief, everybody's probably giving him that information. And Dale, one thing that's making this as a challenge is with the tire that's here, the, you know, the leaders aren't pitting every time. If the leaders pit in every yellow, you can hail Mary these wave arounds and try to get some laps back. When the leaders stay out, though, you're five laps down. There is, there's no pathway back to, you know, gaining laps. That's right. 158 laps to go, 157 to go. The next time we get an opportunity, a yellow, those cars are coming to pit road for the final time. Like you say, you'll never get a chance to get the, the free pass or the wave around. For the, about, rest, for the rest of the race. How about guys like Christopher Bell? He came on lap really around lap 200. He's coming close to that halfway in between uh, the when he stopped and at the end of this race. Yeah, perfect caution would be right now because he is almost out of fuel. He probably can make it to the finish on fuel, so this would be the perfect time for a yellow. He's run 146 laps since his last pit stop. They have not all been green. I'm sure he was saving under yellow. Our man Dylan Welch is in his pit, so we'll see if maybe he can get a little insight. I'm sure they're going to be holding their information close to their vest, but it's Christopher Bell, uh, Elliott in fourth, as I go down the list, Byron in eighth, McDowell in ninth, who are all at that lap 199 last pit situation. You see it on the left side, 147 laps. We say they can go 160. They've had some yellows, probably 170, 175, 25 laps, 16 seconds a lap. It's counting down quick. They just don't want to get caught after coming to pit road on their stop if some caution comes out and they get caught a lap or two down. Yeah, now to your point, Junior, you know, Suarez, there's a couple of guys that green flag pit stops might actually help them save some points, right? They're a couple laps down as well. So a lot of racing still to go here with just over 150 to go. Out front, Christopher Bell, then Larson, half a second behind him, Kozlowski, Elliott, Busher, the top five. There's been cl close calls all around this racetrack. Take a look here with Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin trying to make it three wide. Wow, a lot of contact. Yeah, you mentioned it a bit ago, Juniors. When you're trying to stay out of the way, it's very difficult here. It's so easy to get caught up into something, cause a wreck. Oh, we got a car slow on the back straightaway to 43 of Eric Jones. Must have a right front tire down. That's going to bring out the yellow. Oh, Looks like a right rear tire is flat on that car. And Christopher Bell is very happy to see this. This is pay dirt for the 20. Perfect timed yellow. Your point, Junior. Now they're inside their fuel window to make it to the finish. They didn't have to come under green. Fire flat. Adam Stevens being aggressive. We're going to take a look right here. Yeah, you see the nose kind of pop up. That's the right rear losing air. And Steve, everybody on the lead lap, which right now we have 14 cars on the lead lap. Everybody comes to pit road. I, yeah, I mean, you're inside your last fuel window. I don't think there's any reason you would stay on the racetrack at this point. Tyler Reddick once again on pit road. But now if they do that, there is three, six cars, one lap down. You know, they may all stay on the racetrack and take the wave around. Uh, we're just trying to buy ourselves some laps is really the key, you know. 
There's Adam Stevens right there. Great call. I mean, he's called one heck of a race right here. You get a, you have to get a little lucky for any strategy to work. He knew what he needed, and he was, and you know, you ask yourself all the time, is there something specific that makes this strategy work? And for him, it was a caution inside a certain window. This caution is exactly in that window. All right, NASCAR fans, don't let anything pass you by. The official app of NASCAR Tracks lets you stay up to date on the latest race and event information for all of your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. Saw El Marola there, Bubba Wallace back out on the track after power steering issues for the 45. 23 also having power steering issues. They're back out on the racetrack as well. Gibbs 132 laps down. Bubba Wallace 91 laps down. Again, Kyle Busch out of the race. He scored 32nd. Austin Dillon's out of the race. Alex Bowman, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So Bubba Wallace and Ty Gibbs could leapfrog those four drivers, pushing Kyle Busch, Stenhouse Jr., Bowman, and Dillon all down a spot. Reddick is 26 laps down. And we see him coming out of his pit stall. So the, the idea now, I guess, is so, you know, tires, down the tires and track position aren't going to really do nothing for you. Trying to get tires and be cute with track position ain't going to do nothing for you. You're going to have a hard time passing the guys in the top five. I think anything anything left in the driver's hands right now just comes down to the choose. If you do get a rash of yellows, the choose. What you decide from here on out is going to be critical to where you finish in this race. Marty. Kevin Harvick in likely a must-win situation right now. 20 below the cut line, sitting in six. Rodney Childers needs to take a big swing here. Harvick said, I've got to have more grip. The bottom is getting difficult. I about wrecked it off turn two. You see that wedge adjustment. The bottom is going to be key for the end of this race. Harvick set down. In the middle there, Kyle Larson. No big complaints for him. Cliff Daniels just saying, don't overdo it on pit road, meaning don't speed and put us behind. His teammate Chase Elliott on the bottom. Looks like a little bit of a slow stop there. No major issues on the balance, Dave, for the 9-4 tire Sunoco fuel, no changes. Locked in Logano, we'll get four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel as well, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin's car, for its part, said he was a little bit tight, late exit. Logano needed some security on entry, Dylan. Christopher Bell at the bottom of your screen said that he was sliding the fronts in the center of the corner. They made a chassis adjustment for tires and fuel. By the way, Steve, they were plenty good on fuel. Not going to give away their number, but it wasn't a concern at all. Larson Bell swapping a spot on pit road. Larson, Elliott, and Chastain have all clinched the spot in the next round. Tomorrow, Sunday night football from Lambeau Field. That's Justin Fields and the Bears visit Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Coverage beginning with football night in America at 7 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock.
142 laps remaining from here at Bristol in this the final race of the round of 16 four drivers will be eliminated in 141 laps now. Those that have advanced from the points that they've gained tonight and the attrition that has happened on the racetrack Larson Bell came in already advancing William Byron Hamlin Logano Elliott Chastain and Bowman those drivers those eight drivers are guaranteed a spot in the round of 12. Eight. Once again the eight on pit road. So we talked about most of the leaders pitting the one I think pitted the second time by. I think there was a little gamesmanship in my opinion because that is going to keep six cars one lap down and that gives Suarez a chance to catch those guys Marty. Steve it wasn't gamesmanship Ross Chastain simply missed his box the first time around so they had to pit the second time around but now he's pretty far back in the field but uh, that's why he did come down the second time with the lap down cars. So he pitted and missed his box. Correct that's what I was just told by Phil oh, Sergeant. All right I didn't think he had come down pit road at all. So Did then he, why is was he allowed to pull up would be the question for me. And back underway Larson and Bell will see if Larson can take advantage of that win off of pit road. He stays out in front of Bell. And now Brad Keselowski on the outside of Bell as well. This six car Brad having the run of his season for Roush Racing. The driver owner Brad Keselowski working that high line trying to clear Bell hasn't done it yet. It's tough. Tough fighting down there. Oh and right in front of these guys the A car comes off a of pit road. That's going to have to force the 20 to lift up off the throttle. You see it right there. Reddick just come off pit road and blended back in front of the leaders here. That was close. Reddick almost got into the back of the 20. As Harvick goes by Reddick and Busher trying to do the same. Again, Reddick multiple laps down. Everybody's going to start getting really frustrated with Reddick. He needs to get all the way out of the way. Why is Reddick that slow halfway in the middle of the racetrack? Get out of the way down the straights. Look at him. He's all the way up the racetrack. I, 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 that's unacceptable. If you're that slow, get out of the way. Reddick's in the red. You see him. He's just below the cut line for the playoffs. Four points back from Kyle Busch, who, by the way, is out of the race. Reddick, the problem he is going to incur is he's 29 laps down, and he's 24 laps behind Landon Castle, who's the next position. So he can't gain positions where he is. How did? How did he get from five down to four down? Bubba Wallace out on the racetrack making laps has passed Kyle Busch. The next car that can do that, Ty Gibbs, still on the racetrack as well. Ryan Blaney still on the racetrack, possibly able to pass Kyle Busch. Two more spots right there. Are you surprised that two Toyotas potentially are going to take two points away from Kyle Busch? Two Toyotas coming back out on the racetrack, yeah, I, moving ahead of him. I, I, don't, I, I can't seem to. Uh, in my head around how how that would be accepted by the manufacturer but I guess they're going to let it organically play out I guess there's some tip of the hat that they're just going to let it see where it lands but I would be frustrated if I was on the 18 team fight for fourth Busher still chasing down that four of Harvick Harvick's got the position Two different lines being run by these teams. Kevin, Kevin Harvin keeps talking about the bottom's going to be important for this at the end of this race. He just must feel like that the top's going to start going away and you're going to have to be able to use the bottom. One thing's for sure, with everybody running the top, if you're going to pass, you're going to have to do something different. And Kevin Harvick She's been focused on trying to make that bottom work all night long. Will the top wear out for Kevin Harvick's strategy to play out? We don't know. We just have to have to wait.
Almost a second separating Kyle Larson and Brad Keselowski running first and second. Larson won the race a year ago. Can he go back to back here at Bristol? He's still out front. NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Bristol, the Bass Pro Shops night race. And this is how close it is for the lead. The five of Larson has the top spot, and Brad Keselowski has chased him down to a car length. Same scenario, though. Again, what does Brad do? He can run that high side faster, but when you get to the leader and you have to go somewhere else, that bottom is not as quick. He's going to have to really put the pressure on right here and make this five slip up. He's to the inside. Wow, just like that. Well, it's not over up yet. Up the racetrack. Yeah. Oh. Almost a slide job. But he gave him, he went back to the bottom. He knew he had, he knew he had done a slide job, but he actually pulled it off. Rat Kozlowski on a mission tonight. This is the most laps that Roush has led. 192 laps, and that's going to keep adding up now between he and Busher since 2012, a decade ago. So remember the comments from Harvick. Going to have to make the bottom work. Going to have to make the bottom work. Well, that's why. How are you going to pass if everybody's running around the top? You don't have to run the bottom the whole time. You just got to find a way to run the bottom just enough to clear that guy in front of you. And that was a heck of a move. Great, amazing driving by Brad Kozlowski. And I'm going to imagine that if he uh, if he does pull this off, if he does win this race, it's got to be the most satisfying feeling he's ever had behind the wheel of a race car. It's awesome to win races driving somebody else's car, but when you're driving your own car, something you feel like you've got a lot of equity in, that's a that's an amazing experience. And this is at the top, top level. This is at the most elite level in motorsports in North America. It's been a grind. Right? He didn't just go over there and all of a sudden things just got better. It's been a process, and he said it would be. I mean, he said, hey, I expect to win immediately, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be a process, and they just keep grinding and get better and better and better. 
Well, let's go through the field brought to you by Applebee's, and we will take a look at the playoff drivers on the lead lap, starting with Kim. And Kyle Larson, you see right there, looking to defend his win from last year, will have to make it back around Brad Keselowski to do it. But I asked Cliff Daniels, the crew chief, can you lean on past experience here, being that it's a different car? And he told me yes, and that's because the best race car drivers can slow the track down, and Kyle has a natural ability to do that, to just slow down what's happening around him and process everything and be able to do that at a track where things happen at lightning speed. That's the advantage that Kyle Larson has, Dylan. And the advantage Christopher Bell had coming in here was that he was already locked into the next round of the playoffs. That allowed them to start their preparation already for next week at Texas. Christopher said, I'd love to live here. It's love to win here. It's my favorite race on the schedule, but ultimately it doesn't matter. We're already on to Texas. We need to win there because of the next two races being Talladega and the Roval. They sure would love to end this race with a win. Dylan three times. Oh, Joey Logano coming to pit road. Yeah, the issues for the 22, a flat right front tire. The one Penske car that had avoided this issue tonight will now have a flat tire with 100 to go here at Bristol. And so Joey Logano comes to pit road. My ad in through the field would have been Paul Wolf told me this morning, round one was about not making mistakes. We talk about it every year. And he had solid finishes and gained stage points. They don't want him to leave yeah. because oh, it oh, may oh, not be back, time. Back, Make back. sure that wheel is tight, the nut was but not he's on already the right advanced. rear. Nuts not on the right rear. It fell out of the gun. I think it might have fallen. I don't know, Rick. Maybe it came off of his suit. Do they have a second one on there? Well, I don't know. I saw the nut on the concrete as well, just like the uh, pit crew member did. Just that confusion. It rolled from the le or the right rear. You saw it roll underneath the car and then come popping back out. You see the 40 or the 23 car on pit road, four laps short of passing Kyle Busch. Comes down pit road. They look under the hood. Looks like their night's done. They must have the lug nut on it, I'm assuming because it's still on at the moment, but I saw the same That had to be saw. a spare then, Steve, yeah. because well, the that crew thing... member was just as confused. Right. He was waving his hand, saw the lug nut on the ground. Yeah, that was unfortunate for the 22. Obviously, the right front tire going down, bringing him to pit road. But then as they were doing the service on that, they tried to stop him from leaving. All right, so we're going to come in. We're going to watch him change the tire. So. I'm thinking it comes off this guy's belt right here. Let's see if that's what happens. Oh, yeah, there it is. So it knocks off his belt, off both belts, and there's a there's another nut sitting here. There's nuts on the both sides, so the jack man has confusion. Now he's going to double check the right front and the right rear, give him the thumbs up. I actually give him, you know, I know it isn't or wasn't an issue, but when you look down and that lug nut's there, it has to be concerning. You got to give him credit, Steve, because what happened, that left rear tire, when he went to take it off, it fell off the gun. He immediately grabbed that other one and put it on there. So very quick thinking for that tire changer. Now Larson working the high side and Bell coming into the picture again. Christopher Bell to second. Larson back to third. And here comes Larson looking to the inside. Oh, oh. Almost a little contact. Wow. Again, drivers that are locked in. The 5, the 20, 24, 11, 9, 1, 22, and 48. They are all going to advance. Now we see the 23 behind the wall again. So back to your question, the 45 went on the racetrack and has advanced in front of Kyle Busch. The 23 is now behind the wall. And I don't know if they have another issue. We haven't gotten an official report. But this would seem to be a better situation. They had mechanical issues. Make no mistake about right. it. This isn't a great call taking themselves out of the race. They are way behind already with steering issues earlier. And that makes basically this situation on the left is the whole story for the rest of the night. You have Briscoe, who's plus 17 and running in the 14th position. So he really can't lose 17 spots with how many cars that are out of the race. Suarez, though, at plus seven, he could get down to 29th or pretty close to it. So it would be basically a, almost a tie if he fell out of the race. How stressful is it? sitting watching wondering if you're going to make the next round of the playoffs or not i mean absolutely nothing you can do well kyle bush because of attrition remember he was 
below the cut line when he first left the racetrack. But because of attrition, he has moved back above the cut line by four points and could advance into the next round. Yeah, so I was just thinking about as I can imagine. Oh, oh, Brad Keselowski had trouble down the back straightaway. He, he got he got in the outside wall on the exit. Oh. He's got a right front down. Stay low, stay up high, stay up high. Can't get you down, can't get you down. I'll get you down in a second. Three, two, one, come left now. Come on left, come on left. Watch right here, he right drives in the down, corner. Right down. Goes in, gets in the gas, boom, right there. Right front down. Another right front tire issue. This time it's the six of Brad Kozlowski. No caution coming out. So they continue to race. Bell up front, Larson running second. Quickly, as we mentioned, how well RFK Racing was doing tonight. Another issue. Back to what Dale mentioned early, early in the day. 53 laps in that right front for Brad Keselowski. It was about 40. You wonder, the six finds some speed. I've, I've done it. We've seen other guys do it, right? You feel like you're safe. You got to find a little speed. You take a little air out, take a little air out, and then you finally go too far. Dave. Ryan Blaney will be on pit road again for a tire down on this car. Remember, they were 100. They are 158 laps down, but they're still above the cut line. It was a great start to their playoffs that got them there and allowed them to be in this position. Not locked in yet, but still above the cut line. Austin Cedric is going to pick up a position right now on the racetrack in turn three and four, passing McLeod for 24th. Both those cars six laps down. The next car for position for Cindric is Joey Logano, four laps down. All right, with 80 laps to go, Kevin Harvick trying to get by Kyle Larson. They're a second, just over a second behind Christopher Bell, the leader. Marty, what do you have on this car? Look who's in the picture. You guys mentioned it, Kevin Harvick. Three times he has won a must-win race to advance to the next round or win a championship. The questions are, did they make enough of an adjustment on the last stop? 79 to go, a long way to go in this race. Harvick has been extremely loose. And how desperate does Kevin Harvick get behind the wheel? His playoff hopes could be riding on these finals at 78 laps, Kim. And Kyle Larson riding in that second position. The big issue, just a really tight race car. And he's had that problem all race long when he fires off. It's just way too tight. And there's not enough turn, especially loading into one, as you see the 10 on pit lane. Dylan? And Kim, Eric Almirola is on pit road. They've been battling steering issues all night long. And that appears to be what they're looking at right now. Another Ford having some issues with the steering. That's another spot right there for Austin Cindric. So Cindric grabs another point. He's going to. He's, yep. I think he needs one more lap or half a lap. He's going to pass him, and you're going to watch it live. He's going to go from minus three to minus two. Well, the other thing that's about to happen is Blaney, as he continues to make laps, he's going to go by Kyle Busch. Bush is going to lose a spot. Now it's two points that separate the two right at that bubble. Cindric is slow. I know that he's out there. Looks like he's ran in the back of somebody. Marty. Just think about their night, lap 84. They were the first team to have a right front issue earlier in the night. And that last caution, very timely for Austin Cindric. He had another right front going down. You guys mentioned right now, minus two below the cut line. They told Austin that, trying to hang in there. Christopher Bell out front, 72 laps left at Bristol. Who advances to round two? We'll find out.
Russell running in the 10th position. The 34 of Michael McDowell. Strong run for that team here today. Michael has uh, finished 24th in this race last year, but so far this season, his best finish was third. To no surprise on a road course at Sonoma. Michael's vocal about the fact that road courses seem to be his forte. Only one top 10 on short tracks, but tonight he is prevailing, holding on to a 10th place position with 68 laps to go. Caution has come out and it was Christopher Bell who brings it out with a right rear going down. We've had a couple cars have flat tires that did not bring out yellows, but the 20 car goes down into turn one and two. Sparks flying, the tire is low. Keeps control of the car. Remember, Brack has allowed to lead in the race, had a right front flat. Now Christopher Bell, the right rear goes flat. Caution comes out, less than 63 laps to go. The points right now, one point separate Austin Sendrick and the 18 of Kyle Busch. Sendrick, he has Joey Logano, who's the next spot in front of him. That would be another point that Sendrick could gain if he can get by Logano, but Logano is two laps in front of him. Yeah, but the one thing he likes is this yellow because as much as the field's up, you know, one guy gets wrecked going for the win and he's gonna get by him. He's only seven laps down, so he just needs one more car to fall out of the race in front of him. He will then tie the 18 of Kyle Busch and it goes to the best finish this round and Kyle Busch has had anything but a solid yeah. round. So the tiebreaker would absolutely go to Austin Sendrick. Sendrick right now has a 12th place finish and that was the last race out at Kansas. That would be the tiebreaker that would go to Austin Sendrick. And uh, we talk about. We'll see what the leaders do right here. Are they going to pit? Not very many cars in the lead lap. Larson leads them to pit road. Marty. Steve, one of the questions we asked a moment ago, had they made enough adjustments on Kevin Harvick's car? Rodney Childers just said, how's the balance? He said, it seems okay. Come front could be a little bit better, but happy with it. Now can he get the lead and put himself in a round two, Kim? And you see Kyle Larson there oh, in the middle. Hold on, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. The right, left front is off. Back up, He's gonna have back to pull up. back in the stall. Right. Unbelievable. They had worked all night to put themselves in the position to be able to win this race. Now the left front coming off on this final stop of the night could be for Kevin Harvick. All the way, all the way. Problems on pit road. Now we'll see between the other leaders who wins the race off pit road, because this could be the race for the win. Trouble with the 11 car. 11 car have a problem too. Right. He's having to back back up. Backing him up. Back they up. think they have, will have one of their wheels tight Early. as well. All right, need a jack, need a jack, need a jack and a nut. Come on, jack and a nut. Let's go. Let's not lose that. Rear. Jack and a nut. And you see right there the race off pit road. Busher, Elliott, Byron, Larson, all the way back to fourth. Steve, this one's not going on. It looks uh -huh. like the pins are having an issue with the right, the left rear. The official is, is Hang it. doing a I wonderful got job of. Here we go. Drop it. Got to go. Overseeing it, man. Of course, that was the overseer I was trying to look at. I don't know if it was a wheel issue. I don't know if they changed wheels, but man, pretty exciting here with 61 to go. <laughs> a lot of things happening. We'll have a restart from Bristol when we come back.
Less than 60 laps to go when we take the green. A lot of trouble on pit road for some playoff drivers and potential race winning factor drivers. But as it sits now, the 17 of Chris Busher is in the lead. Now, as we head into the final laps of this race, a few things to keep in mind. The last six short track races have been won by different drivers. So have the last six races here at Bristol. When it comes to Bristol, the last four races have been won by four different organizations. So if those trends continue, Continue. And Christopher Bell is the winner tonight. Excuse me, Chris Busher is the winner tonight. That would bring another organization a win here at Bristol and the first one of the season for RFK Racing. Twelve of the 16 playoff drivers have had issues, and this was an issue for the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Yeah, you see the damage. I'm going to circle it right here. Right, these holes are smashed in. That's why the pins wouldn't go on. And in that cycle of pit stops, Austin Cindric had found a couple laps on Joey Logano, so that moves Austin Cindric now to the 22nd position. That ties him with points with the 18, so that eliminates Kyle Busch currently as they run. From the playoffs, we'll see if Cindric can stay on the racetrack for the last 58 laps. 17 and 24, making up row one. Busher on the outside. William Byron on the inside. Busher trying to clear him. Could he become the 19th different winner in 2022? We mentioned RFK and the successes they have had. Busher's already led 113 laps once again. The 22 of Logano on pit road. Elliott up to second. Hendrick Motorsport strong here as they run two, three, four. Not really ever seen anybody do two tires. Don't know how long this 17 is going to hold on. With all those bad pit stops, Chase Elliott and that team now, they're sitting here running second. You'd have to imagine that after a few laps, those four tires will start to show up. Maybe, but remember, the six car won the first stage on 125 lap tires and nobody could run them down with new tires. We haven't really seen new tires matter, but will they matter now with 53 to go to your point, Junior, right? Is two tires going to mismatch, not handle as good? I love the call. Right now he's pulling away. Separation about three car lengths. Bell trying that higher line. He's got Chastain behind him. Bell has led 143 laps tonight. Busher 118 and counting as he's out front. Brad Keselowski led 109 laps tonight. Because Bell got a bad break when he had that right rear go down, but he got an extremely great break when NASCAR threw the caution. So here he is still with a chance to win this race. Bell trying that low line again. Gets oh. to the inside of the five and contact made. Yeah, that was Christopher Bell just pushing the throttle as hard as he could and got up the racetrack a little bit. Typical Bristol action. So that most of the field is the top six are all running the high side except for the leader. 17, you see him up there. He's still running the bottom lap after lap. Byron tries the bottom back there. Back to the top of the racetrack here in turn three and four. As you look at the contact, Christopher Bell into the five. Happens just about every lap out here on this racetrack. All these guys right here running the high side. Really not able to run down this 17 car leading the race. Less than 50 to go. Not that many cars on the racetrack, which is very unusual. Why that will matter is because for the lap traffic, 
There's so many cars, so many laps down. They may not be as big of a factor as what we've seen here in the past at Bristol when the leader catches them. Bell still working that low line, trying to get by Larson. Those two running fourth and fifth. Larson in fourth, Bell in fifth. We think about the tire issues these guys have had happening around lap 40, lap 50. That's right where we are. And this is probably as fast as these guys have ran all night long. Loads on the right front are worse than ever. You see the 42 car, Ty Dillon up in the wall in turns three and four. He's going to get down to pit road. He was slow for about a lap. Finally going to make it to pit road. But I wonder, Steve, if the load's increasing in this final run, really pushing these tires to the test, whose tires can survive? Yeah, I think the load's increasing. And like, you know, if you feel like you have to be safe, but there's grip there, how will, close are you willing to get? We just saw a pit stop. You know, do these guys take that half a pound out to help their car turn? Oh, be afraid to do that. Everything I've watched. Yeah, but if you're the 20, you're locked in. If you're the five, you're locked in. This one guy never hit the wall with a blown right front. <laughs> well, I just whistled my guy over there, but man, check it. Another half pound out. <laughs> don't tell me about it. Yeah, no, I don't want to. You're going to do it. Don't tell me. Yeah. Hey, just tighten his belt. <laughs> And as we've seen the points, there's a tie right now between the 18 and the two of Austin Cindric as far as points earned up to this point. The tiebreaker goes to the best finish in this round. And so the best finish between these two drivers, Kansas last week, Austin Cindric, that 12th place finish could be the difference of advancing into the round of 12. With Ty Dillon's issue, he's now lost a couple laps. Oh, the five into the wall contact, oh, man. Oh, Stay down. You're clear. You're clear. I was wondering when something was going to go down right there. Christopher Bell was running out of patience. He knows he's got a good enough car to win this race. Five was holding him up quite a bit there. Now we wonder if the five car is comfortable to, to get down in the corner. Christopher wants to go to the top, maybe the bottom. I'm not sure. Where's the five going? The five gets loose up the track out of the gas. Christopher says, here's my shot to go by you, but we're going to have a little contact when it happens. Incidental, but still, just hard racing. I think the five has got his hands full right now. Kyle Larson is not really comfortable. Now the 20 car is clear of him, and he sets sail to go after William Byron. Bell up to the fourth spot. Byron in third. Yeah, and right at, for this battle for the lead, the last few laps, Chase Elliott's had a little bit of a faster car. Busher on the bottom, Chase Elliott on the top. Busher starting to encounter some lap traffic. Let's see how that affects all these cars. And we saw the nine, or excuse me, the six of Brad Keselowski have a right front tire issue out of that same RFK shop. So is Busher going to be thinking, all right, can I make it that final, say, 33 laps all the way to the end? and have my right front tire hold up. Well, 45 has been the magic number. There's 33 to go. Sorry, Jeff. I was just going to say we're going to have to get by that uncomfortable 45 to 50 lap number. Well, and Busher doesn't know it, right? Chris Busher, he does not know when tires are blowing. The only thing he knows is there's a Bristol trophy at the end of these 32 laps. He's just going to push this hard, Dylan. Yeah, and the good news is they've gone long on a couple stints already, so I think they feel confident, but anything can happen, of course. But, man, you got to tip your cap to this entire RFK organization. They went, they went off strategy here with Chris Busher's car at the beginning of this race just to get track position, which they knew they were going to have to do. They got it. Then Scott Graves has made the aggressive calls, the right call here with two tires to keep the track position. Now they're trying to hold on and get Chris Busher's first win, and as you saw, over 200 races, Kim. And Chase Elliott running there in the second position behind Busher. And it was an uphill battle this weekend. They were not happy with that car yesterday. And Alan Gustafson told me it was all but junk. But they were optimistic about the changes they made for today. They struggled with track position early. Now they find their way to the second position. Right now, they're telling Chase on the radio, just keep your rhythm for the rest of the 28 laps to go. And hopefully you'll catch him. Eric Jones has some issues on and off pit road. That gives Cindric, Austin Cindric another point as he takes that position away. And you see the 22 of Logano finally retiring from the event. He's behind the wall. He's still in the car, but behind the wall and multiple laps down. There's the battle for the lead. 
Christopher Busher now moved up the racetrack, trying to find a little extra speed running the high line. Here's the battle for third. It's been about like this for the last several laps. Christopher Rail can't really close in on William Byron on the 24 car. But all this really is almost all in the same straightaway. The leader of the race, second, third, and fourth, all right there together. Lap traffic, something like that. They can really draw all this together or stretch it out. They're going to be passing a lot of cars here throughout the rest of this race. It's been five years since Roush has been to victory lane. It was with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at Daytona back in 2017. Still a lot of work to go and a lot of work to do, but Scott Graves, Crucci's on, on this 17 car. Having the courage to put on two tires. Clearly, even if it doesn't yield a win, which is looking pretty good right now, is a great call. Well, and Scott Graves and Busher, they have a great chemistry together. They won the 2015 Xfinity Series championship together. And now just under 22 laps to go. Well, it's funny how this works, too. This isn't just one good run out of Chris Busher. We've all seen constant improvement out of this car all year long and you know, that, that's what we talk about top fives top tens they turn into opportunities to win a race two tires is a great call but you can't do that from 15th or 20th a lap down you have to have a good enough car to make a good strategy call so here we go chris busher he's ripping the top over here chase elliott he's on the bottom chase elliott trying to find some speed feeling like what he was doing a bit ago wasn't going to get it done so chase elliott's looking and as he's been looking, William Byron in that 24 car, he's starting to run Chase down. Will they have enough time? Under 19 laps to go. Busher quickly getting by the lap traffic. The gap not changing much between Busher and Elliott. And a few spots back in the 10th position is Kevin Harvick, Marty. Yeah, meanwhile, with 18 to go, Rick, the second round hopes for Kevin Harvick and his race team are quickly fading away. I think it's important to note that Kevin Harvick's pit crew all year long has been top three easily. Last week at Kansas, they were the best pit crew on pit road. Steve, they just picked a bad time to have a bad stop. Well, like pit crews like special teams. Doesn't matter how many extra points a kicker makes. When he misses that kick to win the game, that's all the fans remember. And Kevin Harvick's fans, well, they won't care about the other races all year long. They'll know when he needed the stop, the stop to change the season for the four car, they were unable to provide it. It's an unfortunate place to be put in as a pit crew member, um, but that is the reality of the, what the sport has become. It, it's there, it's a lot of pressure for the men and women down there on pit road trying to get these pit stops done. Yeah, those money stops, as you call them, you can't mess up, and that's where the four had an issue. Take a look at the most different winners in a season <laughs> since 72, 18 already this year. If Busher continues in the position he's in, he'll be number 19. That will tie the most different winners in a season with that 2001 season. How about if he can win this race, we'll have gone through the first round of the playoffs with no playoff drivers winning a race. That's never been done before in this current situation of the playoffs. We've never seen an entire round only in 2022. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, it has been great racing all season long. It's such diversity as far as the different teams, cars, drivers all getting to victory lane. Now, 11 laps to go here at Bristol for Busher. Will the tires hang on? Can he hold off the nine of Chase Elliott? He's been able to keep the gap there at about nine tenths of a second. Ten laps to go. Watch all these guys racing up front. Got to shout out A.J. Allmendinger back in seventh in that 16 car having a great run. Cole Custer also in eighth place. Michael McDowell running at 11th in the 34. Justin Haley, we talked about him earlier, running in 12th. All these guys having great finishes. Corey LaJoy sitting in 15th. Taking advantage of the opportunities tonight. Guys, think about Tyler Reddick currently sitting 13th, two points out. The last time this series came to Bristol, it was covered in dirt. Tyler Reddick looked like he was going to win the dirt race. That would have been five more points. Five more playoff points he would have carried in. Currently two points out. A last lap move by Briscoe. Contact with Reddick. Kyle Busch goes on to win the race. We talk about the regular season. Race wins, stage wins, how they matter. 
The last time to Bristol, if this car goes to victory lane, he's currently plus three on the cut line, not minus two. All the way back in the spring is going to affect Reddick's opportunity to advance in the playoffs. Yeah, every driver looks at that one spot, that one position that they lost somewhere in the season that might not allow them to advance. And it's been a tough day for Richard Childress Racing. Under six laps to go. Both Reddick and Austin Dillon below the cut line. Cindric's above it by two points. Under five laps to go. A milestone start for Busher. 250th start. Has now four laps to go. Looking for his second ever win in the Cup Series. That first win, it was valuable and it was important. And he earned it, but you know he wants to see the checkered flag. That one was weather short. He didn't get to cross that start finish line and see that flag waving. See Keslowski, who's a lap down, running in the 13th spot, made the move over to Roush Fenway. The name of the company changed to Roush Fenway Keslowski, a driver owner. And one of the things he has said over and over and over is he wants to make this organization better every race. And he looks at Chris Busher and says he deserves to have great equipment. Well, Chris Busher is showing what kind of a driver he is. And now the white flag is out. One more time around for Chris Busher here at Bristol. Two more turns of the Bass Pro Shops. Night race. Chris Buescher will win his second Cup Series race, and it happens in Bristol. Oh, yeah! Yeah! That's awesome. Good job, guys. You hear him almost out of breath. I hope Jack Roush is here tonight. I know how hard that man works. Awesome. Give these teams the equipment they need. I certainly hope he's here to enjoy this. And think about Brad Kozlowski, almost sitting there thinking you might have this race for yourself to win. So he's disappointed with that right front tire, but this company is starting to develop into the vision Heck that of a he job has. Tonight. 19 different winners in 2022. Yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> nice job, y'all. Nice job. What a season it has been. And Steve, you made the comment. It, it hasn't just been this race. And you see owner and driver here stopping for a moment. And the pick call. Two tires. Let's see. organization finally rewarded for the trip to victory lane look at these guys Christopher Busher. <laughs> Christopher on the side of the door. Christopher Busher climbing out of the car. And now there are 19 only in 2022. How about the non playoff drivers representing here? Sweeping round one been five years and two months, Chris, since Ralph Finway Kazowski won a race. What does this mean to you to bring them back to victory lane? And this is just so special. This team did such a great job. 
Scott Graves, the man who made the call for the two tires at the end. That's just um, first cup win for Fastenal for a Poise Bay race, so that's awesome. Glad to have Fastenal on board tonight. Uh, just so special here at Bristol. I love this racetrack. I love the fans. I love every time we come here. It's so special to me. Lost one that, that uh, really broke our heart back in, in 2015 on the Xfinity side with Graves on top of the box. So this um, this makes up for that. That's pretty pretty awesome, pretty special. How about Scott's two-tire call? Were you worried that wouldn't hang on in that final restart? Not one bit. It was up to me at that point. Just hold on and, uh, and make it work. And we, uh, we had a really fast, fast and all Mustangs. Just so proud of everybody. We knew we had a good race car after practice and uh, didn't, didn't quite get the job done in qualifying, but what a race car. It's just uh, a special get RFK in victory lane for the first time. And uh, you know, we had great race cars. Brad had really good speed, too. So, so <laughs> I don't know what else to say right now. I'm out of breath. Uh, this place will wear you flat out, and I love that about it, but such a special night. Almost 100,000 fans here tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway. What's the significance of winning the Bristol Night Race for you personally? It's number one on the list right here. So this is uh, this is it. Thank you all for coming out. It was a great crowd, great weather. We appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the race. Come back and do it again. Are you gonna celebrate? Man, we haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> all right, Chris Busher brings Roush Fenway Keselowski to victory lane at the night race here at Bristol. 12 advance, as this was a cutoff race for the round of 16. It's down to 12 now, and the points reset. So Chase Elliott, once again, climbs up to the top of the list with the playoff points that advance once they reset the points to 3,000. And now, Chase Briscoe, Alex Bowman, Daniel Suarez, and Austin Cindric already in a hole. They are now fighting to get out of that bottom four. Yeah, and I think perhaps the biggest story heading into the round of 12 is all the way at the bottom of the screen. Texas, Talladega, and the Roval. I mean, I can't think of a bigger variety of racetracks. And one eliminated. The four of Kevin Harvick. Dylan. And unfortunately, his playoff run comes to an end. And you guys fought hard this round and in this race, but how frustrating was it to just not be able to go up there and race for a shot at the win tonight? It's pretty tough. I mean, we pitted in front of the 17, so um, just kind of the way the year has gone and just uh, went from having a chance to lead the parade to uh, being a part of the parade. Just difficult to pass. Cars are way too fast through the corners. Can't race. So moving forward now, the rest of the year, you guys just full on. You about, you're about race wins at this point. We wouldn't do anything different. We do that every week. Thanks, Kevin. Dave. Well, Dylan, from the disappointment to, I guess, jubilation or maybe astonishment, your folks worked hard tonight to get you through to the next round. Yeah, that was easy, right? <laughs> Came in plus two, leave plus two. Just how we drew it up. <laughs> what a night, Dave. Um, just proud of everybody on a Freightliner Ford Mustang. We had right front tires going down left and right from the beginning of the race. and. Um, don't really know why, but I tried to run the bottom at the end of the race. Um, at least it's a Mustang. He deserved that. Congrats to Chris and Brad. That's obviously really cool. Um, congrats to Ford Performance. But uh, yeah, to get all of us into the round of 12 after a very scary night for Team Penske. Tried to do my job, hang in there, and uh, got that one out. What does that do to your head when all that chaos is going on around you? And you know all you really need is points and you need help from other people having trouble. Drive my butt off, man. That's what it takes. Um, Got to stay in the game. You, you know that when there's issues, they're, they're just going to keep happening throughout the race. And you just got to stay in it and make the issues smaller than the rest. But um, yeah, just proud of the team, proud of everything. Proud of my spotter, Doug. Kept me informed very well throughout the race. So total team effort, but uh, back to work. Will work in round 12. Austin Sindrick threw seven laps down tonight, but they still did it, Rick. Chris Busher has made it up to the Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane, and he will celebrate there with the team. You just saw Brad Keselowski lean into the window there as co-owner there at Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. It had been 222 races since his first win, and now Busher has a second win in the Cup Series, and it happens at the Bristol Night Race. More to come from here at Bristol.
That concludes 500 miles here from Bristol Motor Speedway in the first elimination race of the NASCAR playoffs. The four drivers not advancing to the round of 12. Tyler Reddick, Kyle Busch, Austin Dillon, and Kevin Harvick. Reminder, the action continues in the round of 12 next week at Texas. NASCAR Radio Channel 90, it's NBC Sports on Sirius XM. Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern, Steve is going to be the guest there on the morning drive with the bag man, Pete Pistoni. You might be able to answer what's going to happen the next race. That is the start of the second round of the playoffs, and it's Texas Motor Speedway as the round of 12 begins. Race coverage on USA at 3.30 p.m. Eastern.